Hey, Mel. Hey, Joe. Okay, hey, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All set. All set. Three, two, one. We, we are, are Africa, Africa Podcasters. Podcast. <laughs> Welcome. That kind welcome, of worked out. Yeah, it kind yeah, of worked well, out. Um, <laughs> thanks, everyone, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I am Melissa Mbugwa, and I am co-director of Africa Podfest. Africa Podfest is a festival organizer, a podcast research and podcast development company for African podcasters. We are now on the road to Africa Podcast Day, which is going to happen on February 12th, 2022. We are now on a virtual discovery tour of four African podcasting hubs. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button to always know when a new video comes up on this Africa Podfest YouTube channel. Thanks, Mel. Uh, I am Josephine Karianjahi, and I'm also a co-director of Africa Podfest. Our fourth stop on this amazing discovery tour is today, Wednesday, January 12, 2022. That's 1-12-2022 or 12 one 2022 if you're counting. And the whole day is coming to you as a celebration of podcasting. And today, I've been saying this, we are headed over to Lagos, Nigeria for the very first time. So everybody's like, give it up. Amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> We're so excited to be in Nigeria today. Africa Podfest started this discovery tour so that we could travel to African countries where podcasting is growing and tell the world about them. So this is in this new virtual space, all our connections are virtual, which allows us to prepare to celebrate Africa Podcast Day, which is on Saturday, February 12th, mark your calendars, by introducing African podcasters to one another in a big way, in a big way, in a real way, in an authentic way. We thought it would be cool to curate fun conversations and celebrate with curated podcast gatherings on the continent. Even though, you know, we can't travel particularly right now, we can't travel so much um, in the current state of affairs in the world, but our virtual tour has been so, so, so much more than simply a series of events. Absolutely. And the Africa Podfest Discovery Tour has taken us to four African podcasting hubs. We started off in Zambia, we got to... Kenya, we uh, went to South Africa, and that allowed us to shatter the single story of Africa across the continent through epic encounters with African podcast storytellers. So with those four stops culminating on Africa Podcast Day, we are continuing our tradition of putting African podcasters first through a celebration of their work, their products, their presence, and of course, their connections with one another, with us and with you as well. Now that we are coming to the end of the Discovery Tour, not quite a slow end, but a big end, what has made this tour possible? What has made it a success? One is the amazing community of African podcasters who gather offline in each country such as the community you're going to meet today from Niger PodHub. The podcast community always gathers offline um, in the lead up to us having this virtual event. The second um, element that makes the Discovery Tour possible is our phenomenal country hosts who are podcasters with community building expertise. So podcasting hubs in Africa have community organizers. And that's amazing. And that's the whole point of us doing this tour is to get to meet and connect with these community hubs. And today we have Niger Pod Hub, whom you'll meet later, a phenomenal, phenomenal group. The third element that makes our discovery tour work is the amazing supportive partners who have powered the journey through various resources. 
And fourthly is African podcast fans, you who are joining in to take part in this, to watch, to comment, to ask questions from wherever you are around the world, who have joined in and made this discovery tour a real celebration of podcasting in Africa. Together, we found new ways to connect and new ways to forge relationships around growing podcasting in Africa. Yes, and today, the Niger PodHub experience is our January discovery stop. And we have partnered with Africa New Filter, AfriPods, and Niger to introduce the Niger PodHub podcasters to Africa. This virtual event today will bring partners together to connect about their podcasts, experiences with podcast production, to learn about how to become better podcasters and level up, and also to connect as we celebrate being who we are. And who are we? We are African podcasters. This event will be online via YouTube. And you're watching right now. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, thank you. And so we have been huge fans of Niger Pod Hub. And when we attended our very first event at uh, Niger Pod Hub, it was a virtual event and we had an incredible welcome. And one of the things that I can't forget is how powerful Nigerian podcasters are. And indeed, all African podcasters have made huge strides in the last couple of years, especially um, that bring us all together to showcase a variety of content that podcasts creators across Africa, and today specifically Nigeria, are putting out for audiences to enjoy and love. Today's event is also about encouraging African podcasters to collaborate and enhance the quality of their podcasts while building a sustainable community of supporters, because you can't do this without your community. It's for community by community. That's what makes podcasting amazing. Above all, the event is about helping podcasters connect with each other within your country, across different countries, and from wherever, whichever part of the world you are, you can connect today with podcasters whom you probably have not met before this event. Yes, and we do not present this event alone. We are super mm -hmm. excited to welcome Ellie Lovo of Yellow Ray Digital. Yeah, Ray Digital, who are our moderation and social media partners for the Discovery Tour, to take us through this afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you are, through these activities. So welcome, Belia, and we'll, see, we'll chat welcome, with you all a little Belia. later. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Well, thank you so much for that warm welcome, Mel and Joe. This is such an exciting time for African podcasters all around, and I am super excited to be here with you guys today. My name is Belia, and I am the co-founder of Yellow Ray Digital. In the previous Discovery Tours, I was here with my partner, Adele Mackay, my other half, my better half, my creative half. She's down at the moment with COVID. Life is happening, but we're sending her all our well wishes, and she's here with us in the spirit. I know she's watching wherever she is doing the most and all of that good stuff. But shout out to you for logging in. Let us know where you're tuning in from today. We want to know. Drop it in the comment section if you're watching from YouTube. Drop those, drop those flags in the chat section. Make sure that you're making use of that chat section as we go through today's discovery tour. Once again, thank you so much for spending this time with us. We are super excited that you are here celebrating African podcasters. And specifically today, we are in Nigeria with lovely Nigerian podcasters and the Niger PodHub team, who is led by the amazing, lovely lady, Faye. Faye is a amazing, amazing champion in the African podcasting space, specifically in Nigeria. And she's the founder of Niger PodHub. She's an audio producer and content creator who loves audio and she just enjoys sound and podcasting. She founded Niger Pod Hub in 2017 when she recognized that there was a need for African podcasters to be placed on the map and African podcasting content to be found easier. So she saw that gap in the market and she made sure that she created a space and a community for Nigerian podcasters to be able to come through, showcase their work, connect with other podcasters and just connect with each other in general and find tips 
it's a creative ideas, collaborate, do the most as a community. So let us know. I see your guys are commenting on the, on the chat. I see you're watching from Nigeria. Make sure that you're dropping down the countries. Yes, drop the flag, drop the flag, drop, drop the flag. And if you're podcasting in Nigeria, let us know as well. We would love to know what type of podcasting you're into. It's super interesting to always discover new podcasters and to know that you are part of a, a larger community. So today, we're going to dive straight into it. We're going to get in all the meat. We're going to talk about authentic storytelling. We're going to discuss what it means to smash the narrative and to be real to yourself and your podcast as well, and how to find stories that are true to you and how to connect with your audience in a way that will attract and appeal to them as well. So get ready, get ready. I hope you are excited. We have a jam-packed program designed to make sure that you learn, you experience, and you just discover a new way to be a podcaster in your space or podcaster enthusiast. If you don't have a podcast, if you're just here to learn and vibe, you're in the right space. So make sure you're comfortable, grab your tea, grab your water, and get into it. So I'm going to ask Faye to jump on and get into the first session of today. Faye, if you are there, come on board, come on board. Let's get going. Let's get started. Oh, I see someone is watching from Angola. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Bella. Hi, Faye. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm you? happy to be here. I'm feeling excited. I have so many feelings right now, and I can't wait for us to get this on the road and show everyone here, everyone listening, what the Nigerian podcasting space is about. Okay. Amazing. Oh, sorry. Amazing. Yes, <laughs> no problem, so no I will problem. do. I will do a quick <laughs> intro. Um, Niger Pod Hub. Perfect. Um, hello, Perfect. everyone. My name is Fei Fei. If you're just missing me for the first time, I am team lead and founder of Niger Pod Hub a community set up to help Nigerian podcasters be better at the one thing that has brought us here today, which is podcasting. Um, on my own, the best I could do was discover a Nigerian podcast, barely listen to it, take a screenshot of the logo, and post it on the Niger Pod Hub social media page, you know, just so I'd share with the rest of the people following. Um, on my best days, I would schedule a couple of tips and helpful links to share with the community. And on my worst days, I'd breathe into a bag, roll on the floor, and tell myself I knew nothing about what I was doing. Now, despite my very ineffective routine, the community kept growing. And as it grew, loads of questions came up. I was asked so many questions that I quickly realized that I needed to do some studying of my own. And um, the community kept demanding a whole lot from me. So I had a brain freeze moment, the podcasting brain freeze. And this is a word I use to describe 90% of podcasters that I have come across. Because podcasting is like ice cream. You see it, you like it, you want it, you rush right into it, and then you're like, mm, this is way more than I bargained for. So this is actually the moment where a true podcaster is born. It's like a sink or swim moment. Now, one day after a nice long session of breathing into a worn out paper bag and rolling on the floor for two to five minutes, I took an advice from my friend or a goddess to register a domain name for the community. It's Niger Pod Hub. You can check it out right now. That's our website. I built a trash website in the beginning, ruined another paper bag and hit publish button. Um, I also borrowed an idea from Podcasts in Color and created a hashtag for us called hashtag pods in Niger. With this hashtag, a lot of Nigerian podcasters have been able to either find the community or find other podcasters. Now, instead of searching for Nigerian podcasts by myself, I put up a short form on the homepage of the website so podcasters can submit their name, their email, the podcast name, podcast link, and social media handles. This is the simplest way for you to be a part of the podcast directory that we have. Um, you can check it out on our homepage as well and submit yours if you've not done so already. Um, also, you can search for your podcast. It's under the podcast directory page, and um, it's all there in categories and in alphabetical order. Now, I felt that it was time for us to create a space where podcasters could interact a lot more closely with one another and on a more personal level. Niger Pod Hub needed to start making more of an impact on podcasters than just sharing info and discovering new podcasts. Um, the next step was to create the WhatsApp group and have podcasters join in. 
merely thinking about this and having to manage another platform, I went into my survival routine of breathing into a paper bag and rolling around for two minutes. At this point, I remember that I had a lot of conversations with a few podcasters who followed the social media page. I remembered a cheerful, energetic podcast enthusiast who once told me about an existing WhatsApp group. And her name is Rafiat Akiwande, who most of us in the community know as Queen Rafi, and she's our community manager. Now, a collaboration with her meant that Niger Pod Hub would have a WhatsApp group called um, Pod Magic Creators. And it's easy to join. You just click on a link and you're in. But the problem with this particular WhatsApp group is it's always full. So you're lucky if someone leaves the group or um, if there's space on it when you click on it. So this made me realize that we need an extension of that group. And so we created a Telegram group of the same name, right? Pod Magic Creators. And all of these links you can find on our link tree, which is on uh, our social media bio at Niger Pod Hub across all social media platforms. Just click on it and you'll be taken directly to the group. The podcasters in these groups will tell you that there's never a dull moment, right? On Tuesday, we have Talk Tuesdays, where we talk about trending topics in the podcasting space and our rising challenges in that space as well. On Wednesdays, we have new episode Wednesdays, where we share our new episodes with one another. On Thursdays, you have Elevator Pitch, where you pitch your podcast ideas with the entire community and get feedback. On Fridays, we introduce our new members. On Sundays, we talk about milestones, having thousands of downloads, celebrating 10 years or five years in uh, the podcast industry and celebrating um, all our wins, contracts and deals and all of that. Other days uh, in the group, we dedicate to general Q&A and basically having conversations with fellow podcasters. Check again in the link in our social media bios to be a part of the group if you are not one already. Now, Queen Rafi introduced me to more amazing podcasters. I met Tomi Popola, who is now co-lead of Niger Pod Hub. I met Dio Moyo, one of the admins of the Pod Magic Creator Group. I also met Hafista Nova, who at this point I can only describe as a very good friend and supporter of the Niger Pod Hub family. Now, when Tommy came on board, she came with a billion and one ideas to keep the community engaged. And in my usual fashion of panicking when I have to talk to a large number of people, like today, I mean, once it's more than five, it's a crowd for me. I said no to all her ideas, but she had an argument, Clubhouse. Clubhouse made a lot of our ideas easier to execute. And so I gave up the fight. Um, in a given month on the Niger Pod Hub and Pod Magic Creators Clubhouse Club, we have events on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. Our Wednesday event is called Podcast and Chill. Yes, it happens every Wednesday. And yes, it's a remix of Netflix and Chill, just that the chill in this part is not the Netflix kind. It's more opening the room up to podcasters to talk about any and everything, even your relationship problems. <laughs> Though there's no relationship expert in the house to help you, but yeah, anything at, at all you wanna talk about, you can bring it there. And this event can happen either on the first, second or third Wednesday of the month. We start the room by answering podcasting questions, addressing happenings and challenges in the community. And the rest of it just becomes vibes and ishala, where we have fun and talk about anything with each other. On some days we have a guest and on other days, it's just us. Another event we have is our Saturday events, which is called Podcast Review Sessions. Here, podcasters submit their podcast to be reviewed and we, the volunteers or the reviewers, listen to that podcast and give them feedback based on audio quality, content, host representation, host or guest knowledge of the podcast topic and a few other criteria. We call for submissions. Um, that's for interested podcasters who want their podcast to be reviewed. We call for that at the beginning of the month. And then we have the um, podcast review session on the last Saturday of every month. Now, bi-weekly, we also publish articles on the Niger Pod Hub blog. And it's not just articles by the team members. It's open to every single podcaster. All you have to do is write a good podcast related article and submit it to us. There's a link on our social media bios that says guest article. Just click that 
and we'll get back to you. Um, this part of the community or the activities in the community is handled by the fourth member of the team, who is Rachel Torbola. She is our content strategist. She's also in charge of the monthly newsletter, which includes um, highlights from the month before, news about the month to come, upcoming events, record-breaking moments in the podcast industry, how to buy our merch, tips, and a whole lot more. Podcasters can also submit anything they want to promote, and these will be featured in the newsletter. Now, to wrap up, we have our annual town hall event, which is tagged how we can serve you better. We have a Podmas challenge where podcasters release a podcast episode every day in December and split a cash reward if they make it through. This is moderated by Dio Moyo. We have top 50 and top 20 Nigerian podcast charts. This helps podcasters see how well they're doing on the charts. Now the community does so much to serve the podcaster. And in return, we hope to see a thriving industry that tells the truest stories of Africa and Africans as a whole. So that's basically what Niger Pod Hub is about. Thank you so much, Africa Podfest, for putting together this event. And thank you, everyone who's a part of it and who's watching right now. Amazing. That was so beautiful, Faye. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I feel so ready to come to Nigeria and be part of the system. Like, you guys are doing so many events. Wednesday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, whatever day you want, we got you. <laughs> yes, we got you. Thank you so nice. much. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if anybody needs to find um, Faye and the Niger Pod Hub community, you should check them out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They are very active, very, 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 very involved. And they got all the events. Whatever you need, they got you. So make sure you sign up to their newsletter, like they said. Make sure you check out their events and join their community. They have so many events going on and you cannot miss out. The best thing you can do for yourself is join the community and do the most. Again, once again, once again, if you're joining in for the first time, welcome to this. The fourth stop of the Discovery Tour. We are in Nigeria today. Drop the Nigerian flag in the comments. If you're joining in from Nigeria, wherever you're coming in from in Africa, drop your flag, drop your flag. We would love to know. To know. And today's hashtag, Marianne asked on Twitter, today's hashtag is hashtag discovery tour stop number four or hashtag discovery tour Nigeria or Niger Pod Hub, whichever one you feel like, make sure that you're using all the hashtags and interact with us on Twitter. We are wanting to get into conversation with you. We've got this. Let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into our first session today. We have a jam-packed program, like I said. I hope you're comfortable. I hope you're sitting down. I hope you know that today we are learning and we're not getting bored. We're doing the most. We're doing the most. And to get started, we're going to have a podcast workshop hosted by Afripod. It's going to be a technical session that will take 30 minutes long. And to make sure that you guys are actually going to learn what you need to learn, take out your notepads. I have mine. Okay, I'm not just talking. Take out your pen. Okay, take out your pen. Write those notes, get ready to learn because this is going to be an amazing session, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me, you do not want to miss out on these amazing tips that Afropod is going to give us today. So just a little bit of um, a bio about who Afropod is and if you don't know who they are, Afropod is a pan-African podcast hosting and distribution platform for the audio listener and creator who wants to share and distribute authentic African stories. Their mission is to build the largest library of African audio, African audio stories on the planet. Like how amazing is that mission? The largest library of African stories, that is their mission. I absolutely love, 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 love that. On, Af on the Afropods podcasting platform, creators on the continent throughout and throughout the diaspora are able to actually connect with African stories and they have the option to monetize and build their audience as well on their platform. So make sure that you join the Afropod mission. They understand the importance of community. And today they are here to help us learn more on how to edit our podcast, how to understand the, the importance of creating authentic stories and how to choose your podcast host and what stats matter in the, in the monetizing process of your work. So make sure you're ready. 
make sure you're ready. Make sure you got your notepad. Make sure you got everything you need to learn today. And we're going to get into our first session with Afripods. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are ready. I don't know if Kevin is there from Afripods in the background, ready to join us and ready to jump on board to start this session. Let's go, let's go. I am super excited. Like my notepad is here. I'm ready. I am in it. Once again, make sure that you're making use of the comments. Hey, Kevin. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. I love what you guys are doing over there by Apple Pod. No, my absolute pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Amazing. I am here. Amazing. I am trying to log into my tab. Um, and I think, can you see me? Hello? Uh-oh. Lost you on audio. Uh, hello? Can you hear her? But I can't hear her. Hmm? I have no value. You can hear me? Oh, well, can you see my slides as well? Okay, sorry, I can't hear myself. So I guess that's the part that's a bit interesting. Okay, all right, hi everyone. I apologize because I cannot hear you and cannot hear myself, so that gets interesting. So I will be talking to myself. Um, <laughs> today is, uh, we are gonna talk about um, monetization and how to choose your host. My name is Kevin Y. Brown. Um, I am with Afropods. Um, and of course, our goal is to build the largest library of African stories on the planet. And we love to amplify African stories. That being said, I am the chief content officer and head of strategy um, at Afropods. Um, Instagram and Twitter is at Afropods. And then my personal Instagram and Twitter is Kevin Y. Brown. I am also a podcaster and podcast producer. I've been a producer for about five years born on six and uh i run a company called podcast laundry we've produced almost 800 podcast episodes um over 15 million downloads for our users and clients and i also have a podcast which is called the create your life series where i've personally recorded over 186 um episodes um i've released ebooks which we'll talk about in ways of monetizing i've interviewed um nfl nba superstars beyonce's dad um, done special series. I was also on radio in New York City. And my show is now actually syndicated on Sirius XM, which is nationwide in the United States. And I am now based out of Nairobi. Um, so getting into the session, how to choose your podcast host and which stats matter in monetizing your work. Let's jump right into it. Um, that being said, this is about us. Um, Balia already spoke on us, but um, we are a, a pan-African podcast hosting and distribution platform for the African audio listener and creator. And we want to distribute and uh, for, people, for our listeners to hear authentic African stories told by the people themselves. Um, we actually offer free hosting right now. So as the young lady was talking about the, the Naja Hub, we want you to know that we would love to be, you know, your exclusive um, podcast hosting partner. Um, for any of the communities out there, we would love to be able to be the home for you as we offer free hosting and a bunch of other resources. And so kind of jumping in, the statistics that really matter when it comes to monetizing your podcast. Number one, uh, you have your total number of subscribers for the month. Um, and what you want to do is you also want to analyze, you know, your growth, your growth from month to month, year to year. And this helps with the projection. So as you're selling your content or selling the listeners, the ears that ears and eyes that will come onto your show, you can say, hey, you know what, this month in January, we grew by, you know, 200 from December. And, you know, in December, we had grown by another 200 from uh, November. And then the same thing, another 200 from October. So you're growing consistently. Now, if you see a spike in your in your growth, then you can and you start seeing it on a consistent basis, then that also helps. Um, you with being able to project. And then also the great thing about being able to project your numbers means that you can also project your income, right? So you can charge more. So if somebody's paying you, you know, I can get very, very technical in terms of CPM and things like that, but just know that um, you can really get a lot. Um, you can get a, paid a lot more for your content depending on 
how you um, how you're able to project and what your numbers are in the community that you're building around your show. I mean, we all know at this point that podcasting is always about the listener and never about uh, us as the the host. Right. So the second thing is the number of downloads, including all time downloads. So that really helps because sometimes you can go in, especially if you're doing dynamic ads, you can go in and change out the dynamic ads. Um, that people have paid for once you hit that amount of impressions. One of the other things is, you know, to understand is like how many downloads have you gotten in the last seven days, the last 14 days, things like that. Those all help with your projections and, you know, being able to go in and actually sell. And so another thing, another stat that I think is really important is the listen through rate. So if people are, you know, stopping listening to your show at the 25 percent, you know, mark, then that's completely different. Um, and you know, this is just something for you to know because it's very important to understand your user behavior and your listener behavior, because that helps you to be able to know whether or not your show is effective, where your call to action should be and when your premier time to put in advertisements are right. If people are stopping at 75%, uh, through, then you know, that a mid roll and a, that a mid roll and a pre roll are probably your best bet, which means that you can sell two ads per episode versus three. And that's, you know, that goes into a whole lot of other things, right? Like the average time that a person stops listening to a podcast is around a 22 minute mark. So I usually suggest uh, for my production clients to do a show that, you know, really tops off at around the 30 minute mark. Um, but, you know, do you have some longer format shows that are really big winners? Um, but a lot of times those are outliers. And when you're getting out, you want to make sure that you can put yourself in a position where you have a proper workload um, that you can manage and that you can handle. Um, I think another thing is your top five episodes and their download numbers. That's probably what you're going to put on your rate card um, when you start sending it out and start going after advertisers. Um, and then the geographic locations of your listens that really matters, because if you have some people who are looking at targeting specific places or specific communities and, and things like that, then that's going to be really, really um, important uh, for you to be able to give to your sponsors. And then the top devices you use for download. So are people listening on the web? You know, are they using Chrome? Are they using Firefox? Are they using iOS? You know, are they using uh, Android? All of those small thing details matter because now you can really talk to your advertiser and say, hey, I have this specific data. I understand my user. This is, you know, you want to target, you need more people to use your coupon code or your services on mobile. Well, I have you know, 10,000 people who are using Android to download each month and they trust me, they listen to me. So this is why, you know what I mean? You should be vying with me and why you should be spending money with me and my podcast. And then the other thing that you want to understand is what are the top apps used to listen to your show? Really, really, really important. Again, tracking that behavior, understanding your guests. And I think one of the things that I didn't put in here, but this is more so about content is in your show. You should always try to ask for um, audience feedback. Right. So your CTAs, you know, like one of the things that I love to put inside of my um, my shows for my clients in the in the outro is I say, please uh, email your questions, comments and compliments to blank email address at Gmail. Right. And so that helps for people to then be able to start to uh, create a feedback loop with you and for you to build community. Or you could change the CTA and say, hey, you know, why don't you, um, you know, send us a DM on Instagram, see us, send us a DM on tw Twitter, tweet with us and things like that. And so join those conversations in order for you to understand your user behavior. So a large part of monetizing, um, you know, you have the statistics and things like that, but you really need to engage with your audience also so that you can understand what it is that they want and the things that they're interested in. So I highly, highly recommend that. Um, second thing, this I had to do. I know it wasn't supposed to be a part of the presentation, but I know as a creator, it's so important for us to be able to monetize our genius is what I like to call it. So 13 different ways to monetize your podcast. Um, number one, create a course. And that could be, you know, even a course on podcasting. Like I've created a course about podcasting, um, which, you know, people I've taken and have done and it's tried and true. Of course, having the, the amount of experience in launching as many shows as I have. But, you know, you can create courses about different things um, that I think could really help one uh, on one coaching. So like my show, the Create Your Life series is we cover entrepreneurship, personal development and travel. And so I've actually coached people on entrepreneurship and personal development uh, as a result of my show. Sponsorship uh, it speaks for itself. Um, digital products. So if you saw I interviewed Beyonce's dad and then I created an ebook from that interview. And what I did with that ebook was is I used it as a lead magnet 
to get more people to come into my sales funnel for other services. Right. And so I think that that's something that you really want to want to be aware of is that, you know, depending on how you take notes for your show, that's one of the things that, you know, my production company does is we take really detailed note, re really detailed show notes for our clients. And so by the time our client gets to about 50 episodes, they've got enough content for an ebook. All they need to do is figure out the format and take the content from the notes that have already been being created. And then you can sell that, you know, for five dollars, ten dollars or anything like that. Um, again, selling products. So you have your digital products, but you can also sell um, physical products, right? Like, you know, planners and things like that, swag. And then services. You can also sell services. Like, prime example, if you listen to an episode of the Create Your Life series, then you will hear about Podcast Laundry, uh, Podcast Production Company. And so we're selling services and using our podcast as a lead magnet in that way. You have affiliate marketing, which is an opportunity for you to sell other, um, other, products and things like that for someone else and receive a commission. Um, you have the opportunity to sell premium content, which I think is super important um, and very, it's something that has become increasingly more um, accessible in these last, last probably like three years, it became a really big thing. Cause at first, you know, charging anybody, anything in podcasting was kind of very taboo. So now, you know, you can, give people the regular episode, but then you have the behind the scenes or you have, you know, special community, um, special community access and things like that as a result. Um, and that would be your premium content. And so you sell that. Then you have crowdfunding and donations, which you see a lot of with Patreon and, you know, PayPal links and different things like that, which is really good and actually works very well. And then you also have the opportunity to sell merchandise that is associated with your brand, which is your clothing, your mugs and things like that which I think is really good. You have an email list. Now, one of the biggest things that I would really, really like to say is like having, you know, 15,000 Instagram followers for your show is, is good. But if you have 15,000 people on your email list, then you have 15,000 people to consistently sell to um, while you also, of course, add value to them. So it's different because if Instagram or if Twitter shuts down for, let's say, a week, then you just lost all of your followers. But that email list you'll have forever. And so, you know, you want to manage your, your click through rate, your listen through rate and things like that. But it's very, very important for you to build an email list. And so that's why I said in the call to action at the end of a show, you want to go through the um, you want to have that call to action. You know, please email your questions, suggestions and compliments to blank email address. It'll really, really help you. And I mean, all you need is really 100 true fans. And that's just that's just a fact. You know, you have 100 true fans. You can, um, you know, imagine you were selling 15, 15 dollar products to them a month or you had them in a, in a membership group. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. I didn't add membership group in here. So let's say you had a membership group and you had 100 people and you were selling something to them at 15 dollars uh, a piece or their membership was 15 dollars a month. It's affordable, you know, depending on where you are, even if it was five dollars a month, that's still five hundred dollars. So you got a range of $500 to $1,500 just there off of 100 people. And honestly, the thing is that podcasting is a grind. So it starts with one person, you know, and then you building up. Um, and so like I waited, not I waited, I had to grind and work hard on my show for two years before I got it syndicated nationally in the United States. And so that's a part of the game too, is, is uh, podcasting is a long game, um, but it can be very, very, um, beneficial i would say to what your your goals are in your true north you just need to be patient uh consistent and excited about the journey i would say um and then number 13 events you can do live events you can do meetups you can do i used to do a goal crushing workshop you know where i would charge people um and so they would find out about it through my podcast you come to the event you can attend virtually or in person i help you out with your goals for the year and then from there you can join the um the membership group and for, I think I was charging $75 a month or something like that. And then you can literally, uh, or was it $100 a month or something? I, I forget. It was a while ago. But you can literally, um, you know, look at that funnel. You go from the podcast to the event, then on to the membership group. And so, you know, you're getting paid in every aspect of that. And you're literally building up and you're building a community around whatever the theme of your show is. And like I said, one of my th big themes for my show or two of my big themes is personal development and entrepreneurship. So your goals help you to get towards both of those things, which I think is super, super important. 
All right, so let me jump off of this one and get on to the next thing that we are supposed to talk to you about. Choosing your podcast host. What is important? What is not important? Uh, these are the things that I think are the most important when choosing your podcast hosts. Number one, IP ownership. Um, that means that this make sure that your host allows you to own your own content. There were some hosts prior that um, essentially got in trouble with the podcast community. This is earlier on because they were essentially owning the RSS feeds and owning the content of the creators, which is not right. And I just want to shamelessly plug that that is not the case at Afropods. You own your content and you are the, uh, the creator. Uh, you are the master of your fate and the, uh, you're the master of your fate with Afropods. <laughs> okay. And then number two, you want to make sure that there's an easy setup process, right? Um, master of your fate, captain of your soul. That's what I was going to say, but it's an easy setup process that really, really matters. And then you want to understand your storage limits and your bandwidth, right? Like storage limits means there are some podcast hosts that say, Hey, you know what? For X amount of money, you can get 250 megabytes per month. Uh, you can upload for this amount of money. Right. And so what that means is, is that 250 megabytes, you know, if you divide that by four, you know, that puts you, you know, make means that your files need to be a certain size. So if you record an episode and they happen to go over, now you're worried about how am I going to make this fit? Then you have to try to compress it and figure out all these other tricks and things like that that you need to do. So you want to be very cautious of how long you plan to record, how big a file size can be and what the storage limits are for a host. You also want to be understanding of your bandwidth limits. And the reason why the bandwidth is important is because with bandwidth limits, that means that can limit how many people can actually um, access your show at one time and also how much um, how much how much content you can upload overall, right? Like let's say, you know, episodes, you know, one through 50 are available, but because you exceed your bandwidth limits, then maybe only the last 30 episodes, you know, might be available. So you want to be aware of all of those things. And I also want to say that at PAC, at uh, AfriPods, we don't have any storage. Our bandwidth limits and hosting is free. So analytics reports are super, super important. Again, as you saw when we were talking about monetization, um, you want to be able to make sure that um, that you can get the right analytics that your particular sponsors are looking for. And so being able to access your stats, seeing your stats are super, super, super important. Um, next thing is ease of use. Again, I have to like it might be one thing to easily set up a podcast. It's another thing to um to be able to use it easily. And that's really, really important. Um, you want to be able to navigate your um, your dashboard very easily. And for that, I definitely would like to demo the Afropods dashboard for you and help you to see uh, how easy it is to, um, to navigate Afropods. And then number seven is support. You know, you want to be able to reach out to somebody on a particular team um, at your podcast host if anything ever goes awry. Um, and be able to reach out, touch somebody and actually get some, um, you know, get some feedback and get some solutions. Right. And so prime example, um, you know, as a as a producer and running a production company, you know, sometimes the technology for different platforms doesn't work. Right. And so it might appear on all platforms, but not my your show might appear on a client show might appear on all platforms, but not appear on um, on Apple. And this literally happens on Spotify. And so we might need to shoot over a message or we'll try to troubleshoot it ourselves internally. But we might need to shoot over a message. And they're usually pretty good about, you know, getting back to us. I, I will definitely, you know, admit that. But that really, really matters because you don't want to end up in a situation where, you know, you're let's say you have a deadline to promote an event for a sponsor and your show doesn't go up. And it's like last minute. That is not going to be a good thing. And so you want to make sure that you have that support on hand and. Speaking of support, Gathoni is my, um, our right hand when it comes to community and, and podcaster support. And so she's all, always available and always on um, on standby to support our podcast. So I think one of the other things that's really important is understanding pricing. You know, you have some podcast hosts who are free and then are, allow you to upload a certain amount of um, gigabytes per podcast. And you have some who charge by the megabyte. And then you have some who charge like a monthly um, who, who charge charge by the megabyte and some who just charge by the month with unlimited. And so those are things that you really want to understand. And as a creator, 
possibly just get starting out and things like that. You really want to understand what your budget is, what your budget can be um, and how far are you willing to go on this podcasting journey? So I think that that's a, a really, really um, important aspect of choosing your podcast host. And then other thing is uh, monetization cap capabilities. Um, you know, when we talk about monetization, everybody wants to get paid. And unfortunately, right now, we haven't been able to, or not we, right now, the industry has not put a concentration on the African creator here in order to get them paid through, you know, dynamic ad insertion, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's one of the things that we're actively working on at AfriPods right now is cracking that code to make sure that creators get paid. You know, our CEO, Molly, is always saying, you know, I want to make sure that African creators take up as much space as possible and get paid for their genius. And that's something that us as a unit, as a team, that we're very, very, um, that we're very, very committed to and that we're going to make sure that we strive to do. So, like I said, you know, this is this is what Afropods, this is what Afropods is about. But these are nine things that you definitely need to take into consideration when considering a host. And now I would like to demo for you the Afropods um, statistics dashboard and how to create content with this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing for two seconds and then I'm going to pull it up. And then I am going to um, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to show you. So please bear with me while I switch. Okay, I am back, y'all. Um, and so, what I would like to share, hold on, just making sure, can y'all see me? Okay, cool. Somebody said we can see you. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you. Uh, now we can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so let me make this big. All right, so once you log into to Afropods and um, you are inside of our dashboard, what you have the opportunity to do is you have, you know, podcasts created so far, which is one, uh, episodes created so far, which is 73. You have the opportunity to see, you know, how many downloads you've had in the last day, um, you know, the last seven days, the last 30 days, and the total so far. And then you also have the downloads um, over the last 14 days. You can see the statistics, you know, like um, whether it's went up or whether it's went down. Um, and then you can also zoom in to see how your podcast is behaving or is performing rather. And so you can just zoom in. These are the capabilities that we have. And then you can scroll down even more. You can see the last five episodes and the downloads. And that completes kind of like your dashboard. And then when we go to statistics, as I was telling you, uh, the statistics page is a bit more in depth. And so when we go to statistics, that's hilarious. Um, it, things get a lot more in depth in regards to your podcast. So you have the download history of a particular podcast. Um, again, you have, you know, the zero, uh, the last day, um, the last seven days, last 30 days, all time downloads. Then you can select the time period. Right. Where you can pick, you know, oh, I want to see the shows from a month ago or, you know, from last week or something like that. And then you go in and you can even even have the opportunity to pick the individual episode that you would like to see the statistics on. Right now, we're going to keep it in the overall view. So just just so that everything stays populated. Then you can look at the downloads, um, how many new followers you've gained, um, what's been happening for the last two weeks. And of course, how many episode likes you have overall. Then again, here you can kind of zoom in and get very granular in regards to time frames and things like that. And so you can really go in and see your points of where people are downloading, how they're downloading, 
et cetera, et cetera. And this is also an exportable port. So one of the things that you're going to really need to do um, when you're trying to get monetization and sponsorship is you're going to really need to be able to show, um, you know, an authentic report or screenshots. Um, but of course, so you can export it here of your actual statistics so that people know that you're not photoshopping things and that you're actually um, providing the right amount of uh, or basically providing what it is that you said you can do. And then you have top downloaded episodes, right? So these are the top 10 downloaded episodes for this particular pod. Um, and as you can see, you know, 21,000, 6,000, like these, this show does a really, really great job. And then here you have your ge geographical distribution of downloads. And again, this is why I think everybody, you know, in Africa should be hosted on Afropods because we are Africa first. And you can see that as you see Africa right here, you know, first in line before Asia, Europe, Oceania, everybody. Africa is here and this is where we're focused on. This is who we are uh, dedicated to. Um, so here you can see 68% of, of the downloads come from uh, Africa, Kenya specifically, Uganda, you have some in South Africa, right? And then you go to Asia, you can see that, you know, the United Arab Emirates um, is big. 1% um, is coming from Asia, 641 downloads total. So you have the total number of downloads plus percentage. And then you have Europe, you have, uh, Oceania, which is, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Kiwiland, Fiji, and then you have other locations like the United States, um, Canada and Brazil. Right. And then you have your world overview, which says, hey, you know, worldwide, you're doing thirty eight thousand hundred percent. But where are they primarily located at? And you, you get it by country. So I think this is really, really important. And as a seasoned podcaster and someone who sold advertising and things like that for podcasts, I can honestly tell you that this report will do you a lot of justice. Um, when it comes to trying to, to working to monetize and, you know, essentially getting paid for your genes, which is what it's all about. Then you have your source of distribution of downloads, which I mentioned earlier in the presentation. So this is really important um, because you, people are going to want to know where are you being downloaded at? What are you doing? Um, and, you know, how can I make the best return on my investment as I want to invest in you and your show and your genius? Right. So you have, you know, whether it's coming from external players, web, Android, web, desktop, uh, web, iOS, Afropods, Android app, web, other. So one of the beautiful things that I have to say about working with us and being a part of the Afropods, what I would call community and family is, you know, if you see something that you feel like we can um, improve, we're literally an email away. Like we um, we have this model here in the office is correction is direction. Feedback is love. So we welcome people to give us feedback and to um, to offer their insights on what they think may work and may improve. So the fact that we're open to that means that you can always send us a DM or, you know, an email and have a real conversation with us about, hey, you know what? I love what you talked about in the discovery tour um, presentation. What do you think about adding this to, you know what I mean, to that? And like I am, I'm myself and Adam, uh, you know, who's, a, who's another gentleman on our team, it, we oversee the tech. So we are here to essentially get you to where um, to get the tech as best as possible for the African user, because, again, we are Africa first. And so your opinions matter, your feedback matters, and we want it as much as possible. So please hit us up. One of the other features that our desktop offers is downloads by time of day. Um, and what that means is, is like this allows you to really, really be able to narrow down and track the behavior of your users. And so you can say, hey, Monday at 12 a.m., this particular pod got 16 downloads. But if you see where the hotspot is on a Monday, you know, I'm seeing uh, downloads 9 a.m. is where, you know what I mean, they consistently score high numbers. But their real, real hotspots are on Thursdays from 5 p.m. all the way up until midnight into Friday. So Thursday into, into Friday. So the real question would be, are they releasing on Thursdays at 5 p.m.? And then um, and then, you know, it's carrying over like that or is Thursday just a hot day for them. So I want to also say I want to stop presenting to y'all and say, please type in all of your questions inside of the chat. I'll be happy to answer them once I um, once I finish. I only have a couple more things to go through on here, but please start asking, you know, typing up your questions. I would love to answer them um, about the platform. And then the next thing is is daily listeners. I gotta reshare. Okay. 
All right. So the next thing is daily listeners, um, which is which is really huge. Um, you want to understand who your listeners are and you want to be able to zoom in here. This is something that you can do here and you can see, you know, how many people, how many listeners you're getting every single day. And so once you start to understand that behavior and this is literally just scrolling in and out on your keypad. But once you start to understand that, then you you really mix your daily listener numbers along with the times and you have a really successful formula for understanding your user and then also being able to uh, go out to advertisers and say, hey, you know what, if your event is on Saturday or is on Friday evening, you know, and I see from my statistics that I'm, you know, if I release an episode on Thursday, you know, Thursday into Friday, it'll be the hottest thing going. So therefore, you know, release with me or advertise with me on a Thursday, I'll release it, you know what I mean, that day and into Friday, I can guarantee you X amount of impressions and that many people will know about it, right? Or, you know, that many people may buy tickets. So this might help them be more targeted um, in who it is that they're, that, you're, that they're trying to reach. I think also understanding, so one of the biggest things that I ask my clients to always do is we go through an exercise where we create a listener avatar so that my client and the podcaster is always speaking to one specific person. So when you go to somebody and you try to monetize, you can say, hey, you know, my person is a, a black female, um, specifically in Western Africa, um, Nigeria, um, age, age 25 to, to 30, you know, and she has X habits. She's a college graduate, you know, employed, uh, single, no kids looking to make an advancement in her career. Now, when you go to somebody with that and then you say, hey, I can track the behavior of this person, then they have no choice to kind of take a listen and decide that, you know what, it might be smart for me to um, advertise with this person because they have the exact demographic that I'm looking for. Now, if you go to them and just say, hey, I know, you know, I have a podcast and, you know, different type of people listen to it and they listen between these hours, you're not going to be as likely to get advertising dollars because you you then don't know who your listener is or who it is that you're marketing to. So that's why it's so important for you to understand your listener, because, again, your show is all about your listener. And as long as you can keep people engaged, um, then you can build community and then you can also build um, you can build community and then you can also build um some monetary value from your genius and so that actually concludes me demoing the dashboard um and so like i said afropods is very easy to use our hosting is free uh, migrating to our podcast i mean to our platform from another platform is literally three steps so if you would like to let's say move from soundcloud move from anchor come over to a company that's african owned that is uh african centric um, then, you know, we would be delighted to have you and we would love to have you with us. So that being said, I'm going to stop sharing, but it seems like it. Stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Kevin. That was amazing. Yo. Wow, wow, wow. You couldn't hear us. You couldn't hear the claps. You couldn't hear the snaps, but it was so, <laughs> so informative. And personally, I have a podcast called Conversations That Bloom, and I'm definitely going to transfer it to your platform now because wow, wow, wow. I'm really, really inspired by what you guys are doing over there by Afropod. So thank, thank you, you so much for that session. And thank you for your time today. Extremely important. Um, we're going to jump into the next session now because of time but we are so thank you and please do go on to our social media platforms ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions for Kevin he's very active on social media on Twitter Instagram drop all your your questions on there and yes now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our next session i don't know about you but i'm really enjoying myself the vibes are vibing the entertainment is about to come through with what we need i know you guys are ready i know you've been learning what you need to learn but we're going to get into the next session and that is a nice spoken word from marvel i'm going to give a brief yeah, so obviously his name is marvel aka MTB, the writer, he's a native of the Idu state and he lives in Lagos, Nigeria.
Nigeria. And from a very young age, he's been performing on prestigious stages all over Nigeria. He's won numerous awards. MTB's desire is to create a bridge between the elite and the fiction, his elite and the hopes for the world. So without further ado, I'm going to allow us to jump into our next session. All right, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the spoken word from Marvel. What's up, everybody? My name is MTB. I'm a spoken word artist, poet, video creator right here in Lagos, Nigeria, where people in East Africa, you already know what it is. So <clears throat> I'll be doing a piece and it is titled A Black Child. I hope you like it. All right, let's go. <clears throat> a black child, they said, your life cannot be more than this. If you cannot time travel back to your mother's womb, become a zygote. Siphon off your father's sperm, look for another man and come back with your last name, Dangote. Then there is nothing for you. If the acronyms are your plaque, it's not BSC or BED like, then close your eyes, go back to your BED and sleep, dream all you want because the only thing coming through is the failure your parents are already used to. Words alone cannot reverse this course. You need to walk down the aisle with the standards of society. Put your Martin Luther, I have a dream attitude in the casket. Come out of the grave of hope and face reality and stop waiting for a sign from heaven. When the sign you need is from the hands of a man, I repeat, stop waiting for a sign from heaven. When the sign you need is to find the opposite and I have partners of your mathematical problem because the number that your bank accounts keep popping up is zero. Why does your zero, eight, ones, or two, four, six, or eight digits, I can't dig it. Hey, boy, listen carefully. They said, your life cannot be more than this. If you look like you come from the hood and shell cases only find comfort in the bodies of innocent ones. Where violence is sacred like Sabbath and people are constantly becoming burnt orphans. Where people freeze because they are tight. Where people freeze because they are choked and they have no place to go. If the slum is your home and you hope to blow, then I'm sorry, bro. You're far from the lamb light. You can't even taste the feeling like Coke. And I know that your body is not front cover magazine material on your pocket. She has a similarity with that dumb fat boy from high school with his big and empty at the same time. Hey, black child, listen carefully. They said, your life cannot be more than this. If you cannot turn laptops into tools for fraud and make yourself a G, but you keep relying on a G O D, that thought will leave you OD, overdose with poverty. Your super strength will be emptiness, wretchedness will build a cape for you. Your kryptonite will be when you see others succeed, you will see that society does not give a tiny hoot about your dreams. As long as you can pull strings and blinks off your neck, nobody cares about the source of income. As long as you can see these masses as a medium to fulfill your avarice, their vote as a boat to go on a voyage to a land flowing with milk and honey. Preach peace but give guns to street dogs to make sure your politic is properly sticking. Hey, black child, listen carefully. They said, we, Nigerian youth, cannot be more than this. That we don't have a voice. That we will not one day rule. That we cannot make a change. The question is, do you believe? Thank you very much. Peace out. I was just in the background snapping my fingers. I don't know about that. I was just like, yes, 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 yes. What? Every time there's a spoken word artist in every single stuff that we've had, I've always been blown away. Like the talent, oh my goodness, it's too much. It's too much. Well done, well done. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Mark. We really appreciate and honor your excellence, your creativity, and your ability to connect the elite and the street. Like you say, love it. We are about it. We are for it. Awesome. Now we're going to jump into our next program, our next technical session. Get ready to learn once again. We're going to have an amazing session with the, the team from Podroom. The session will be facilitated by the amazing Tolu. But before that, I would love to give a brief introduction of who Podroom is and why you should be interested and you should be about it. So Podroom is a, so is a social network platform for the podcast community. They are creating a centralized digital community for the podcasting revolution. They provide podcasters like myself and yourself with the platform needed to connect with like-minded individuals, raise awareness for their self-owned media outlets, as well as create command and great avenue and create avenue streams for their podcasts as well. 
So without further ado, help me welcome Tolu, who will be facilitating this session today. He is a problem solver, a podcast actor addict <laughs> i was gonna say podcast podcast artist but he's a podcast artist addict and then an, and an aws solution architect wow lots of words in my mouth but you guys get what i'm trying to say so yes help me welcome tolu you'll be facilitating today's session tolu if you are there i hope you can join me on the screen let's get into the session we are ready we are doing the thing today yes let's get into it Oh, before he gets on, actually, as he tries to get on, I hope you guys are making use of the chat section. I see you guys doing the thing. Woman prayer group, nice one with the spoken word. Yes. And I saw Rachel commenting as well. He, that's the most, it's going to be just amazing. So as we wait for Tolu, right, as we wait for Tolu, we're going to just go through what the Discovery Tour is about. The Discovery Tour has been happening in different stops. We're going to do a refresher now. It's been happening. It started off with Zambia. Zambia was amazing. We had different podcasters come on board sharing their experiences and what podcasting is about in Zambia. And then we went to Kenya. I think I want to say Kenya. Yes, we went to Kenya. Kenya was amazing as well. And we had Sima Box come on. They were our partner there. It was so amazing. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed myself. And then we had South Africa, South Africa hosted with the Journey podcast of the people. That one was live, a hybrid between live and virtual, one of the first we've ever done. It was super, super fun. And then today is our last talk with Nigeria. You guys are here joining us. And it's been such an amazing time. What has been um, one of the highlights that you've had if you've been joining us since the beginning of this discovery tour? Drop it in the comments section. Have you been joining since the beginning? What country are you here from? I saw some Kenyan flags, some Nigerian flags. I would love to see those flags in the comments dropping as well as our, on our Twitter platform, Instagram and Facebook. Make sure that you're tagging us and we're interacting. What is something that you have taken away from this discovery tour, whether you're a podcaster, a podcast in enthusiast, someone that supports the podcasting community in general? What's a highlight that you've taken away from this discovery tour? Let us know. Discuss with us on Twitter, Instagram, on all of our socials. We would love to know your feedback. And because we are still waiting for um, Tolu, who's still not here, I'm going to continue discussing the vibes with you guys because, you know, I just enjoy discussing the vibes with you guys. What has been a highlight for me? I want to know. I want to discuss. For me, the highlight was just to see the number of people that really love podcasting in general and how excited they are to speak on their truth and to speak in authenticity. So many podcasters have really decided to step aside from what other people have been doing on YouTube and how everything has been running on there. And the power of audio has really been evident in everything that has been running through with the Discovery Tour. And it's super exciting to see that people like yourself and myself are jumping on board and learning all of these amazing things that we do need to learn as we continue the tour. So yes, <laughs> I see Mel, mm -hmm, I'm got, I got the pink on my nails. So yes, um, that's really been a highlight for me, seeing all of the amazing podcasters come on board and just share their authentic stories, learning how I can monetize my own personal podcast, as well as connecting with other podcasters from different countries in the world. It's been super, super fun and super exciting. And there's a comment here that all oh, African stories matter. Yes, 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 yes. Every single African story matters. It doesn't matter how small, how little, what industry, what space, where you're at, it does not matter. All African stories matter. So we are going to have to jump. Oh, oh, great. Oh, 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 yay, 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 yay. Tolu is here. Dun, 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 dun. Tolu is here. And I will give you guys some entertainment and letting you guys know about why it's important for us to champion African podcasting. Um, yes, so Tolu is here. Please help me introduce him on stage. He'll be facilitating our session from Podroom. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Hi. How I'm are you? amazing. How are you? I'm amazing. Good, good, good. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to give you the stage. Great. Jump on. Get into it. Get into it. We are all ears. Okay. Let me share my screen. One second.
true. Yes. Um, I hope you guys can see my screen. I, my name is Tolu from Podrum. I'd like to play a quick video for you guys. You guys can see my screen. Um, okay. Um, about Podrum, we um, already spoke about this a little bit. We are a social networking platform for the podcast community. We believe that social network and podcasting, they are the sides of the same coin. And um, we are very much into this aspect on Podrum. We believe that podcasters and podcast listeners have the opportunity to become one, to relate on the content, to share interesting ideas on our platform. So um, my name is Tolu again. I'm a podcast enthusiast. I'm an AWS cloud engineer and um, I love solving problems. I love building great products. How do we stand out in Podrum? Number one is our podcast content. We believe in Podrum that once you can create the best podcast content, you will definitely attract people to listen from all walks of life. Our community, we strongly believe in community because we feel like if a podcaster and their listeners have interactions, magic can happen. On Podroom, um, podcasters get feedbacks for their podcast content so that they can create better content. We also um, have videos with our podcast application. Our podcast application has the um, functionality to play video snippets so that listeners can see 40 second snippets, 30 second snippets of the entire one hour podcast and decide if they would venture to listen or not. Um, we are also we also stand out through our monetization feature. Um, in Africa, we are the first to insert um, donations into our applications and so many nigerians have been um, enjoying this feature um, i would also talk about some other monetization features later on um be seen how does podroom help podcasters to be seen number one is the discovery we have a page on our application that is the discovery page we believe that not everybody's going to be the Joe Rogans. Not everybody's going to be on the front page of every podcast application. So we are giving um, outlets to indie podcasters, to new podcasters, to share their podcast content through video and then post it on our podcast application. We are the only podcast application that allows this this video and audio um, enhancement in on, on the platform. Um, the second aspect of it is the video podcast. Um, we publish and host video podcast, and um, I would also talk about some of the things that we are building around this video podcast, which includes ads insertion and so on and so forth. So on Podroom, one of our basic feature is that we allow podcasters to be seen 
and to be heard. Why being heard? Um, gone are the days where people log on to radio and the radio presenter talks for hours. Yes. Can you see my screen at all? Oh. Okay, just give me one second. Let me see how to share my screen here. Can you see my screen now? Am I sharing my screen? Can I? Oh. Um. Try. Oh. I don't know what else to do. Let me see. Okay. It's unfortunate. Um, hey. We would have to continue. Hey, hey. it's okay. Yeah. Listen, it's okay. more about your screen. It's okay. We Sometimes technical issues happen, but your presentation is going pretty well, so you can okay. continue. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. No problem. So um, we allow the podcast communities to be heard, to give their feedbacks. It's important that you get feedbacks. So we created a chat room where podcasters and their listeners can interact, can engage. Uh, let me tell you a quick story that happened during the pandemic, very close to September 2020. Uh, a guy was going through serious um, depression, and then he came on Podroom and searched out a depression podcast. And... Um, he typed that he was going through depression and he was going to end it. So when I saw that backhand, I reached out to the owner of the podcast on Twitter to say, look, look at the comments that we have on your podcast. Can you please, you know, as a depression um, therapist, can you please help in this situation? And we were fortunate. She was lucky. Um, to jump on board and they had, you know, uh, a meeting. They talked about what's going on. And two days later, the podcasters came back to us to tell us that we might have created an application that saved their life. And this is because someone out there recognized the fact that you can intuitively make comments. You can intuitively ask questions and, um, during the pandemic, this is one of the things that kept us going. This is one of the stories that made us feel like we are, we have not been wasting our time, you know, building this application, especially for Africa. Um, our monetization, um, like I mentioned, um, donations, and we are building our hard insertion server currently, um, where podcasters can go insert ads in the beginning and the end of your podcast and publish it and share it and then in turn sharing the ad revenue our business model is you know premium for podcasters ad insertion and also podcast um, donations um, we have launched our application for over a year now, and um, we're in the process of building a version two that is going to include every aspect of podcasting. People will be able to create snippets right on the application. People will be able to create their podcast right on the application and also be able to insert ads. We have already gotten in touch with some companies that are ready to um, publish their video ad ads on the application so that um, African podcasters can in turn make money and can also, you know, invest in themselves, invest in stories, invest in content, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm sorry about the technical difficulty. 
um for some reason i can't share on stream yard um with my um, laptop thank you so much Thank you so much, Tolu. I know the technical difficulties were too much, but thank you for that information. It was really amazing. And thank you for your time. We really are grateful that you, you carved out the space and the energy to give us this, this amazing session. And people are interacting on Twitter. So if anybody would like to continue interacting with Tolu, please do so on social media. We're gonna continue with our program today. Thank you so much, Tolu, you are amazing. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing, amazing. Once again, make sure that you're interacting on all of our socials if you'd like to continue finding out more about what Podrum is doing and how they're impacting the podcasting space. Make sure that you're following them on Instagram, Twitter, and all of that good stuff. As you can see at the bottom with the banners, check out the hashtags, interact with Africa Podfest, interact with all of our partners, and maybe you might find a collaborative partner or two. You might be able to monetize your podcast today as well. So make sure that you're doing the most interacting and checking out our socials. And comment where you're watching in from in the chat. Again, I would love to know where you're coming in from. Today has been amazing so far. Let's jump into our next session. We're going to get into another spoken word a performance for you guys. It's been an amazing, an amazing day so far. Everybody has been bringing their A game. The vibes have been vibing. The things have been doing what they need to do. Our next um, spoken word session comes from the amazing Dio. Dio is the host of the future. This, this is the future part. Of, ooh, let me back it up. Let me back it up. Let me not ruin someone's podcast. I might say it the wrong way. So let me slow down, back it up, and say it the right way. Awesome. So the spoken word artist is Dio. Dio is the host of This is the Future, a podcast that talks about Africa, as well as giving inspiring Africans, aspiring Africans a platform to tell their story. As we said before, all African stories matter. He's also a teacher and spoken word poet. And without further ado, we're gonna get into his session. Oh, before we get into his session, let me introduce the other artists. You know, we've got your vibes. You know what we're doing today. It's just about niceness and enjoying the aesthetics as well as learning. So after Dio, we're going to get a musical performance from Joyce. Joyce is amazing. She is an amazing artist. That is, a, She's a singer and a songwriter who has got a couple of years in the music space. She's been able to capture her, an amazing sound with her discerning ears. She's got amazing and lush lyrics. I just love, 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 love the fact that she used the word lush. Lush is one of my favorite words. So yeah, growing up, she's been open to unique vibrations. Her style has been greatly influenced by listening to electric sounds of the great pronounced chants, the Arabic music, Motown, and many more Nigerian and African genres. She's got a huge focus and thorough um, interaction with hip hop and country music, as well as improving her songwriting skills. So those are the two amazing artists we're gonna get into. So make sure that you are listening, enjoying the vibe, but first and foremost, we're gonna start with the spoken word artist by Dio. So without further ado, let's jump into that spoken word artist, yes. I learned that in some awesome. climbs, how was your night is a crime. The way the same words, the same statements said by two people from two different places can mean two different things. There's a difference between take your time and take your time depending on the color of the skin of the sayer. One is a treat, the other is a threat. How do I explain to a blonde man that in some nations moonlight is more than illumination in the sky? That instead, it's a silent call for attention. To an African boy from a certain generation, a tortoise is not a tortoise creepy creature, a mass of rock with some stretch of skin that looks like an afterthought. A tortoise is not a tortoise. What they see as tortoise to us is memories. Memories of the cracked voice of our grandma, pure oratory, beautiful poetry, the way she drags her words and dramatizes with her hands, the way she drags her words from cliff to cliff to climbers, but before it bursts, the way she bursts into songs. 
the beat beat tap tap of the feet call and repeat in that moment you can just feel the stars fearing jealous the thoughts is swelling with pride for in that moment it's not a creepy creature it's clever slow but intelligent cunning in a good way mischievous you just need to see the twinkle in the eyes of the kids who sat listening in silence and i bet you would bet that somewhere deep down they wish they were half human half tortoise have you ever heard of the parable of the blind men and the elephants every day you see blind men and women on youtube they've been schooled all their lives that africa is a jungle set them loose with a camera and see them fall over each other they book a ticket jungle session for monkeys and bananas, the pool of gorillas and prints of elephants, they surmount hills and mountains, part dead scramble into caves, looking for dead bones, bust and beast, trinket tusks and topless tribes. Have you ever heard of the parable of the blind men and the elephants? Every day you see blind men and women on cable. They've been schooled all their lives that Africa is Nazareth. And as Nicodemus says, they look down from far, he see, and all they see is Jerusalem. I see them blink the way their eyes skip the beautiful gates and rich history. I see them draw, tapping on the buttons on their drones. It's the way they zoom in, not on the glitters on the gates, nor the beautiful rocks that make the pillar solid. They zoom in on a patch. It's a pool named Bethesda, having five pushes, it's west, it's east, north, it's central, southern, it's a symbol of Africa. The air is punched with a stench of sweat mixed with fields and blood from flesh cuts. To the left is a lame man leading his blind wife who is weeping because she lost her deaf daughter the day before. It's the way... They zoom in, not on the glitters on the gates, nor the beautiful rocks that make the pillar solid. They zoom in on a continent paralyzed. There is war, fist fight, is the survivor of the fitless sickness, unemployment, blackout. Cutting falls. Cutting rise. For the way we have two sides of a coin is the same way we have two sides of a story. How can we forget, how can we forget in the hurry that somewhere on the streets of Germany in 1884, a raped continent was ripped into parts, placed on platters to be shared amongst the rapists? Is it not an irony that today the grandchildren of the rapist is the one using a searchlight to find the secret places of the raped? I now know what my forefathers meant when they said, a mango tree cannot bear oranges. Is the way they zoom in on the fields and blood from flesh cuts on a continent paralyzed. There is war, fist fights. Is the survivor of the fitless sickness, unemployment, and blackout. But there is more, the resilience of a people, dogged, happy, ingenious, genius builders. There is culture, there is hope, dreams, aspirations. And only a man trained to man diamonds can know the words of a mineral covered in mud. Nay, if only we could give the minerals microphones, how sweet would it be to hear them sing, we are diamonds and when they fail to give minerals microphones diamonds would always sparkle we are diamonds
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So we are just having a slight technical issue at the moment. Um, we're going to allow Joyce to just figure out, you know, we're in Africa. Do you know what I'm saying? Just can, let's just remember that Africa sometimes the African connection humbles us. Yeah, so we just need to make sure that um, we need to make sure that we, we we respect the network of the continent that we're in <laughs> and pray that the network God can just balance things out and yeah Joyce will join us in a second and hopefully everything will be back to normal so yes the network was just um bothering her for a second but other than that ladies and gentlemen please let me know what you guys have been enjoying about the session drop in the comments below what has been your favorite takeaway so far what have you guys learned from the two different podcast sessions that we've had with the with podroom and obviously that spoken word about we are diamonds Sorry, I just see this comment again, Africa Podcast. We are, di yo, die, yo, die, yo, die, yo, die, wow. Mm, 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 that was amazing. Like, wow, I was blown away. And every single time when there's a spoken word artist that comes on board, like I said before, Marvel did the thing with connecting the streets and the leads. And then Dio came to remind us that we are diamonds. We are diamonds. Never forget it. I just love it. I love that spoken word artists always dig deep into their hearts and it always connects with every single person, no matter which country you're from. As long as you're on the African continent, continent you will definitely be able to connect with that. So because of the network issues that Joyce is having and to maintain time and to honor each other's time, we will jump into the round, the round table discussion. And once Joyce's network balances out, we will be able to have her back on board. So as we do that, as we get into the round table discussion, I would love for us to just get comfortable, get your questions ready, get your ears ready, get ready to listen to these amazing Nigerian podcasters that are gonna just speak their heart on how podcasts in Nigeria specifically are smashing the single story. How are they smashing the single story? How are they shattering the single story? How are the Nigerian podcasters making sure that they're allowing all types of voices to be heard? So that's what the topic will be on today. That's what the round table discussion will be on today. Rihanna was obviously singing about us. <laughs> oh, Rachel. Oh, Shasi, I know, right? She was definitely singing about us. But anyway, since Rachel made that comment, Rachel will actually be facilitating our roundtable discussion today, and she's part of the team at Niger Pod Hub. She's amazing. She's the content strategist, and she's in charge of the newsletters as well. So that's what the roundtable discussion will be about. And just to jump into that, the roundtable discussion will, be, will have various podcasters that will be speaking from their hearts and discussing and telling their feedback on various questions. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the podcasters. We're going to have Rodney. Rodney, um, he's going to be part of the podcast roundtable. His podcast is called The Young God Podcast. And then we're going to have Dr. Ramat. And we will have Busayo, who will be representing Lofi, Lopfi Media. And then from there, we're also going to have Dre. He's representing the Backyard Band Podcast. And we're going to have Tony from Tony Doe Media and The Young Love Podcast. Um, which is going to be presented by Kezia. So that is our team of roundtable humans, and they will be here today doing the most of the roundtable discussion. So I'm going to invite Rachel and Faye as well. Actually, she's also going to be on board. Hey, Rachel. Hiya. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Hopefully, our African internet does not disgrace me today. <laughs> You can say that again. I am loving your pink hair. Let's just talk about this pink hair. What are you what 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 are you saying about this pink? I love it. I'm oh, inspired. You. You mean... Oh girl. Oh girl. Girl. I, oh, girl. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm so inspired. I'm super excited for your facilitation today. And I'm sure you're gonna do the most. You're gonna bring the fire. Make sure that you just do the most. I'll be here in the background if you need me. But All right. yes, let's get everybody else on board and we're gonna do that roundtable discussion awesome. all right amazing amazing okay so i can see 
our panelists are joining us. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. So I'm just going to allow you guys to introduce yourselves, your podcast or your brand. I know in terms of some people it's a brand. Oh, something's going there. All right, let's start with you, Rodney. Rodney, can you hear me? You should check his microphone. Okay. Mm, nice work. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Are we good? We're good, we're good. We so can what, hear you, what was Rodney. the question again, please? All right, so quickly just introduce yourself, your podcast, or your brand, and or your brand. Okay, um, hi everyone, my name is Rodney Omar Kachia and the, the host of the Young God podcast, um, it's a podcast for gods, and it's a, uh, it's a space where I curate uh, stories, conversations, and ideas that, you know, help people figure out how to live better, how to be better, and how to, you know, enjoy their lives, and it's, it's, it's eclectic like that, it's a variety show. It could be a monologue, it could be with a guest, it could be, um, you know, it's, it's just an overall audio experience I'm really proud of, uh, and thank you guys for having me. All right, awesome. Thank you, Rodney. All right, next we have Tony Doe of Tony Doe Media. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Hello? Okay. Oh, okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Tony Do, um, representing Tony Do Media. I'm a producer, a host as well, um, with a background in radio, but uh, I have two podcasts the Tony Do podcast and uh, Upgunners podcast. The former, uh, it's my conversations with people in the radio industry, and the latter is dedicated to the passionate Nigerian Arsenal fan who expresses himself in pigeon whenever his team upsets or does him proud. All right, okay. So that's me in a nutshell, basically. All right, thank you so much, thank you so much. And next up, could we have Keziah, please? Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can. Okay. So my name is Keziah Bilawa, and I'm the host of the Young in Love podcast. The Young in Love podcast is basically for young people between the ages of 18 to 34 yep. mostly. Yes, we can. But, you know, older, older people could also listen, of course. And the Young in Love podcast is like a platform where young people get to share their experiences or their experimentation yeah. with love, dating, sex, heartbreak, marriage, divorce, you know, and everything in between. So I'm really happy to be here with all of you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kazaya. Next up, we have Ramat. Great. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. Uh, thank you again for hosting this wonderful, wonderful program. My name is Ramat Mohammed. Yes. I am the CEO of Triple E Media Productions, and uh, we produce immersive uh, content that is focused on the African story, you know, uh, from the Nigerian perspective. Um, our platform for audio programs is 234 Audio, and that's where we produce and we distribute our audio programs. Um, our audio programs are meant for a variety of audiences. Um, we have um, weekly news analysis programs, but we also have True Crime, and we have some other shows that are coming up right now. Most of our programs are interested, and uh, yeah, we love, we love podcasting, and we do it for a living. Thank you so much, Ramat. Let's have uh, Mr. Dre up next. Hi, Rachel. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. That's cool, man. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you guys for having me. Um, shout out to Nigel Pod Hub for putting this together um, and the Africa uh, Podfest team. Um, so my name is Mr. Dre, and I run a podcast called Black Cat Bands Podcast. It's a comedy podcast. Um, we are based out of um, the country of Canada, but we are Nigerians uh, <laughs> and Moroccan. Um, so yeah, we are a comedy podcast, and you know we're a banter and style um, 
um, commentary podcast. We just provide commentary on issues that you know affect us as as black people um, um, from back home as well, and and in the country that we're in. So you know, we are we're a fun podcast. We have conversations um, that that speak on our experiences, and we just try to create an, an environment that is just welcoming and and fun, and you know, um, 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 and, and very interesting. So yeah, but thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mr. Dre. I am loving your current setup. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Last but not least, we have Victor. Hi, Victor. Hey, Rachel. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Okay. So uh, my name is Victor, uh, a member of the founding team of Lipify Media, uh, representing the rest of the team, John, Emmanuel, Liz, who are also watching at this moment. So. Our podcast, Black Lenses, is focused on telling African stories, um, everyday African stories across different genres from uh, fiction to nonfiction, history, uh, comedy, banter, um, trailers. So, yeah, and it's completely um, sc uh, scripted podcast. So um, I'm excited to be here and be part of the conversation. Thank you so much, Victor. All right, we're going to get started. I am uh, going to start with the little bit of an icebreaker sorry did somebody want to say something okay all right we're going to start with a little bit of an icebreaker and i need everyone to use one word to describe a nigerian podcaster rodney let's start with you I can hear you, Rodney. Uh, I would go with um, inventive. Inventive. Okay. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, Ramat, what about you? Did you hear me? I said yeah, inventive. We did. Yeah. I would go with authentic. Authentic. All right. That's a good one as well. Mr. Dre? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say adventurer. <laughs> adventurer. Ooh, I like that one. How about you, Victor? Oh, I'll say underdogs. Uh, underdogs. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Kezaya? Uh, one word to describe the Nigerian podcast. Yes, one word. It has to be one word. Tenacious. Tenacious. Okay. Yeah. Tony, what about you? Hmm. <laughs> Resilient. 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 Ah, okay. So we have tenacious. We have resilient. We have adventurous. We have we had quite a few good words. All right, and uh, another one. So I want to know what do you think sets your podcast apart in the space that you are in, and the space that we are in right now. Obviously, it's the Nigerian podcast community. So, Mr. Dre, especially somebody who's in the diaspora. <laughs> How do you feel that your podcast sets you apart? Um, I think it's the idea that we sort of draw um, a lot of our content and a lot of things that we do. We try to bring it from the different ends of, you know, our our spectrum. So one spectrum representing people back home in Africa and one spectrum for people who are, you know, migrants or people who are immigrated here into the country. So I think what sets it apart sets us apart is the fact that we can our podcast sort of brings those two worlds together, and that we try to you know um, make it um, 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 I try to balance it and make it approachable and 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 relatable to everybody who's listening to the podcast. So I think that's the way I would I would say our podcast sort of just like stands out stands apart. Okay, all right. And we have Rafi in the comments who says she would use the word resilient as well. Diane Moore said he would use creative to describe the Nigerian podcaster. All right, I love it. Ramat, what um, do you feel sets you apart in the podcasting community? Um, we, we try to focus on creative nonfiction as our over, um, overlying theme across all of our shows. So every single piece of content we create is based on a real life story, something that has actually happened. Um, and we try to bring back the art of scripting. Um, I know there's a huge 
huge uh, market out there for reality shows and sort of um, a lot of sort of on the spot discussions, but we're trying to bring back the art of scripting as well um, into our shows. So I would say those two things, it's, it's scripting as well as uh, creative nonfiction. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Kazaya, how about you? Okay, so I think there are two things that set my podcast apart. And the first one is that we're having real life conversations, raw, let me use the word raw, very, very raw conversations on the Young and Love podcast. And we're having discussions around topics that people think are taboos. You can't talk about this in public. You can't be seen saying these words. I'll give you a typical example um, on the Your Penis Can Break episode. When I discuss penile fracture and people are like, oh, you can't just say that out there in the open. I'm like, why not? And when I tell guys that they could suffer penile fracture, they're like, God forbid, God forbid. But it's the truth, it could happen. So I think that Young Europe podcast is different in that we are bringing to the forefront discussions that people maybe know about, but they are like too, too righteous to talk about or too reserved to talk about. That's one thing that sets the Young Europe podcast different from other podcasts out there. Okay, I find it interesting that you mentioned the word taboo because this was one of the questions I was going to ask, but how do you deal with or manage stories that you know are particularly taboo or uncomfortable or that they push boundaries, whether it's culturally, particularly for you, I would say culturally, how do you manage those kind of topics? Uh, so I like to give a lot of examples. So uh, the episode I did about side cheeks, for instance, and the obliging, you know, husband and stuff. In the African society, mostly, uh, side chicks tend to like get all of the blame in, in in a situation where there's an affair or something. So I did an episode on that, and instead of inviting the side chick who usually gets all of the blame, I invited a a married man who described himself as repentant. So I invited a repentant sugar daddy and. He was open, you know, on the podcast. He had that conversation with me about the things that drove him to make the choices that he made at the time and all of that. So I'll say that in discussing topics that are taboos, you know, should not be spoken of and all of that, it's very important that you find someone. There's always that one person who's willing to share their story. So by the time people see that, okay, someone is willing to share their story, someone is willing to be that vulnerable in the public, they will know that they're not alone in the struggle. And so it would, um, it would evoke, you know, it would, it would cause, yeah, it would evoke conversations around that topic that's a taboo. And one step at a time, one episode at a time, one day at a time, you're demystifying some of these topics. So that's it for me. Just break the ice by getting someone who is willing to be vulnerable about that taboo. And that's it. Oh, wow. I love that. That's a very interesting angle, not inviting the side chick, because that's true. I like the phrase, repentant sugar daddy. Sugar daddy. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they should put that on a t-shirt or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on. Now, as we all know, podcasting is changing perceptions about Nigeria in particular. I love the fact that during Dayo's spoken word, he talked about the fact that, you know, people are taught to look at Africa and see it in a certain way. So I found that really interesting. And, you know, we have a huge audience. We have people who listen to Nigerian podcasts from all over the world. I've seen it in our WhatsApp groups where people are celebrating their milestones and they say, oh my goodness, I have people who are listening to me in the UAE. I have people who are listening in Asia. And why do you think that these people choose to listen to us? You know, what is it about Nigerian podcasts or Nigerian content do you find is interesting to them? And I'm going to direct this one to Rade. Um, first of all, I think that the advent of Nollywood and, you know, Nigerian content creation has really made it um, possible and made it made Nigerian content very very um, exciting and and intriguing that audiences from abroad would want to like you know 
consume it because the Nigerian experience is very unique from, you know, before our independence to during the, the period of our independence to, to after it. And then right now, the, the Nigerian experience, the Nigerian context, and the fact that Nigerians just so happen to occupy almost every corner of the world. So when you have these Nigerian voices, uh, voices speaking about all kinds of things, uh, whether it's just banter, whether it's very specific, whether it's general, it tends to, you know, hit the spot. It tends to capture um, uh, a, a captive audience and it just makes sense all the way. So if you happen to have a voice, if you happen to have Nigerian blood or even Nigerian friends, you might not even be Nigerian, but just have Nigerian friends and be able to like draw from their experiences. It, it, it really takes your content to another level. And I think that's what uh, the, the Nigerian uh, um, podcast space is currently enjoying right now. All right. Okay. Ramat, I have a question for you. Uh, with the way that everybody is jumping on podcasting right now, especially in Africa, do you think that within the African or Nigerian market, there's actually an opportunity to people, for people to make a living off of podcasting? Um, not yet, so don't put your day jobs. Um, I, I think there's a potential, <laughs> um, but, but I would highly recommend that you hold on to that day job. Um, and then you 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 know you use your sort of free time to develop um, your content, and then hopefully as the economy picks up again and people are starting to realize the potential, we can start to um, make ways for people to to actually earn a living. Um, you know, for for my company, you know, we we do have a team that we do with staff of people that we hire to create our content, and I would love. To keep hiring, but God knows there's so much content we'd love to, to keep making, but clearly the market is, is not there yet. But I do see the potential for it to be there, um, and we just have to keep pushing. I mean, the things that you guys are doing, the things that everybody on um, here is doing, um, I think can help open up that market. But so, yeah, don't quit your day job yet, um, but but uh, hang in there. I, I do think there's potential. Thank you so much, Romat. Thank you so much, Romat. So don't put your day on. Hopefully we'll be able to make a living off of podcasting. Mr. Dre, I'm going to move on to you. So on your podcast, you have people of different nationalities, which is quite interesting. But um, how do you feel? What problems, shall I say? Do you feel that your podcast... What issues should I say? Let me let me run that back. So what issues do you feel that your podcast addresses in the narrative of being an African or being a Ghanaian living in Canada, Canada, or being a Nigerian, shall I say? <laughs> um I think yeah, so yeah, so the we're Nigerians and um we have a Moroccan on our podcast as well. And I think one of the issues that uh, I think one of the things that we sort of just try to like put out or sort of preach on our podcast and on our platform in general is that um that we are primarily just black we're primarily black and we sort of um speak like our experiences are very similar um and so we try to you know preach this unison um um use unison of people or try to create this community that fosters unison amongst you know um Black people in our community, Africans, wherever you're from, and we try to preach that a lot um, in the way we do our things in our podcasting and our, even with our guests and and the way we sort of plan our content um, in terms of that. So I try to feature guests from different backgrounds, from different parts of, of 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 Africa within our community, and try to just say, hey, you know, we don't live necessarily in our home countries anymore, but we live here, but we can come together and we can have fun and and do things to uplift um everyone around us and so that, that's the one thing i really enjoy about you know um being a being a black podcaster in canada um and and doing things the way that we do things and also having that you know um sort of um um what's the word that threshold where we can have fun uh where we can poke out our experiences and, and say oh hey you did this and i did this but we did it differently but it's still the same thing and we cannot like laugh at it and have a few jokes at it so um i think that's very interesting and that's how we sort of um tackle these issues by again like i said like bringing people on um that have these shared experiences and having having that conversation and 
trying to then um, reach out to the different communities surrounding us and, and say, hey, we do this and we're here and we're going to be here for a long time. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Network decided to kick me out, but uh, there's a little Who bit wants of to take going on over for Rachel in the meantime? So, can you guys hear me? Hiya. Yes, Rachel, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Network, as we know. So, these, what happened? having some issues with the sound. So if you're not speaking, could you just kindly make sure that your mic is muted and hopefully we can get that issue solved. I'm uh, moving on to Tony, uh, Tony Doe Media. I want to know where is your head at in terms of collaborations, whether that's on a global, continental or national scale? I think Tony's network is acting up as well. <laughs> yes, it is. Good internet. Tony, is that you? Yes, it is. Okay, I can hear you now, Tony. Okay, I missed the question. I'm sorry. I didn't get the question. No. So the question was in terms of Tony Do Media, if your head. Yeah. In terms of Tony Doe Media, where is your head at at the moment in terms of collaborations, whether that's internationally, globally, continental, or national? In terms of collaborations, uh, I won't say I've actually started collaborating yet, but um, there's a lot of networking going on. Um, shout out to the Niger Portal community and, of course, AfriPod first. First of all, you start from home and then, you know, you reach out to others abroad as well. So I'm still very much in the networking um, stage, um, especially with some international bodies. And um, we're looking at how we can, I'm doing my best really to try and draw attention to the great work that journal podcasters are doing. So what I'm doing in my own way is collating data and then showing it to them out there that, um, okay, we do have a community. It's not as big yet, but it's alive, it is well, and it's unique, and it's us telling our own stories. And um, if you're looking for authentic platforms to do that, then you should start paying attention to Nigerian podcasts. And that's, uh, that's what led, of course, to the surveys I've been running so that I could sort of like have an idea of what to pitch to these networks about um, what the Nigerian podcast is doing. Yeah. I didn't even get to hear okay, your whole so I answer, hope Tony. That, so came sorry out. that I got kicked off. <laughs> All right, so Tony, another one for you. For the past two to three years, you have been collecting data on podcast listening habits in Nigeria. What would you say is your biggest discovery? Tony, did you hear my question? Uh, I just answered one. So was there another one? Yes, yes. There's a follow-up question. Okay, I didn't get that. Sorry. <laughs> All right, no problem. Could Don't you repeat it, it, please? Don't worry about it. <laughs> the internet is absolutely <laughs> terrible, but we move, we move. So I was saying that it for is. the past two to three years, you've been collecting data on podcast listening habits in Nigeria. So what would you say is your biggest discovery? Yes. Um, the fact that you 
what you have this year might not necessarily be this, or the sort of results you have this year might not necessarily be the sort of results you have next year. I'm still a bit amazed that based on the research, um, we seem to have more male listeners than female listeners. From what I've observed, um, we have more female podcasters than male podcasters, at least more active female podcasters. But it's interesting to see that. And it's it's been growing, you know, in stages. Um, I think when I started the initial survey, it took forever to get 100 people to participate. But the most recent one, I had um, close to 300 participants and um, representing a variety of interests. So um, it's interesting to see how the Nigerian, I think the core thing for me really is the fact that the Nigerian super listener doesn't um, use a podcast as a secondary medium. Uh, we've heard it said a lot of times that people listen to podcasts while doing other things. But based on what I've been able to do with the surveys, I found out that people are invested in the podcasts they listen to. So it's the core thing they do um, before they pay attention to anything else. So it, it means that they're invested in the personality, they're invested in the content, and they're very passionate about, you know, the interesting podcasts or the podcasts that they find interesting. So for them, it's a primary listen um, as opposed to um, a secondary medium. All right. Thank you, Tony. Um, moving on to Ramat, so with your style of podcasting, how do you go about your research and fact checking? Because that is something that seems to be lacking a lot. A lot of people prefer to do podcasts that have to do with gist or bands because it's really hard to get a hold of information in the content. Yeah. Um, so um, my background is, you know, I was I was brought up in the world of research. Um, I got my my PhD in neuroscience, and um, after that, all the jobs I've had um, really required. Uh, quite a bit of, of research and fact checking. Every single job I've had, um, you know, requires that as a baseline skill set. Uh, so already coming into the the podcasting community, um, into the content creation community, rather, um, I already had that. Like for me, that was a requirement. If our information is not right, then either we don't include it, or we tell our audience that we don't know. That that's those are my two criteria. Either we know for sure or if we don't know for sure, we make sure that the audience knows that we don't know for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I recognize that when, when we were going into this business that um, I wanted to do more of that research-driven type of content, um, um, you know, because again, I have the skill set. So I, I've been able to kind of set up for my team processes that we use to be able to make sure that we are constantly fact-checking our work. Um, we have certain sources that we always go to. We always make sure we confirm with at least two, if not three sources um, for our information. We look at the types of sources that we're using. Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of that is is in the is in the work that we do. Um, we have people who are solely based on researching and helping us identify information, which we then bring into the writing of our pieces. And even as we trans as as we go from sort of looking at the research and then translating into writing, we also have to make sure that uh, things don't get lost in that translation from original research to, to writing. So, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And, and that's why you can see we can't re release daily podcasts. Um, you know, even the, the one that we do every week um, takes a lot from us because it, it is a lot of re reading and making sure that we have things right. Thank you so much, Ramad. All right, Victor. A lot of us are yes. produced by Luke Media. Based is history based, and also the difficult audio materials that you use to tell these stories. Yeah. Uh... Well, I, I didn't quite get, get, I didn't get the question correctly, but I think you're asking about our history uh, 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 shows and the stories. So yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, the stories have to be told. Uh, our history, our culture is a huge part of our export to the rest of the world, which is 
pretty much what uh, we are about. Black Lens is one of the great stories that billions of listeners can enjoy. Um, African themed stories, African themed stories, Black themed stories. Uh, so yeah, first of all, it's uh, important to find those stories. Um, of course, in, in Nigeria, uh, um, our history is not well documented. So you have to dig deep, you have to as much as possible speak with uh, uh, people, try to get information from the right sources. And um, and where they don't exist, you so we sometimes have to recreate some of this uh, um, conversations we believe could have happened in in telling the story. So that's why we work with um, lots of creatives because a lot, we do a lot of voice acting to bring those stories to life, uh, so that people can actually almost feel what could have been happening in those times. So yeah, that's that's really what we do. We work with uh, creatives across Africa trying to bring these stories to life. Uh, we dig deep in terms of finding the right, uh, the, the research, do the research, ensure the facts are correct. Uh, and of course, when, we, when we're not clear, we put out the disclaimer saying, look, we, we, this is based on uh, reports and what we've gotten, but we can absolutely guarantee the integrity of the information. But it's important to tell the stories because uh, it's one of our biggest exports to, to the rest of the world. So much, Victor. Kezia, and again, congratulations to you. Uh, you recently won the Pulse Influencer Award for po podcasting last year. Woo -woo! Congrats to you. And um, what was the experience like, and what impact did it actually have on your podcast? Uh, thank you very much for the congratulatory message. The impact that winning the award had on my podcast was very very enormous because in fact from the time when the voting was going on I saw that my followership on social media increased exponentially <laughs> this was before I even won the award so I noticed that um, the followership increased my listenership increased I would have unique visitors on the website every day every day and eventually when I won the um when I won the award, it was double of the growth that I had witnessed prior to the uh, winning of the award. So what that did for me was it made me know that now, you know how they say to whom much is given, much is expected. So it's like if I've been doing things uh, a certain way, now there's a standard that I have to meet. That, that was good for me because it made me sit up, even though now I am currently taking a break because... I just feel like I have so many things to juggle at once and the podcast cannot, there's no place for it right now in my life. It just made me understand that if I'm coming back after that break, then I must bring my best, right? But at the same time, I had to balance that expectation that I had for myself and that others had for the podcast because for me to have won the podcast, it means even before winning, I was already doing something right, something that people already loved, something that people already enjoyed. So if I'm going to be, maybe switching things up a little bit. I must make sure I don't lose the core of the podcast. I must make sure I don't lose the essence. I must make sure I don't lose the, the, the elements, you know, those tiny, tiny details of the podcast that make people enjoy it. Uh, again, winning the award taught me a very big lesson. And I know I have said this before during the uh, podcast chat that we have on Clubhouse. I said it before, and one of the lessons that I learned from that experience was that uh, a large following does not necessarily equal a dedicated following. And that whole pulse voting period made me know that even though I'm not so much a celebrity podcaster, <laughs> I had a dedicated following. So the, the few people that were following were committed, they would get others to listen get others to vote you know it was like a day and night thing day and night thing so it's important for any podcaster who's listening or for anyone who wants to start a podcast you might be very pressured you might be extremely concerned about your numbers oh i want lots of people lots of people for me i'll say at the beginning you just need dedicated people you don't so much need the numbers because that will put a necessary pressure on you there's definitely an audience for you so when you start, make sure that you're attracting the right audience. And, and once they're dedicated, once you have their commitment, once you have their loyalty, once you have their support, then the numbers will come. They'll, they'll definitely drive the numbers up for you.
So uh, yeah, that's what I learned and that's the impact that winning has had on the Young in Love podcast. Um, did Rachel get my response? Did anyone get my response? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. The network gods have decided to just do what they do best with Rachel's network and just, wow. Wow, wow, wow. They've really been fighting with us today. Network, wow. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been amazing. This roundtable discussion has been so, so fruitful. And I want to actually apologize for the pronunciation of Kezaya's name. Please pronounce it for me again. It's Kezaya. Kezaya. Isaiah. Kezaya. Oh, Isaiah Kezaya. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I love your name. It's so pretty and so different. We heard Thank your feedback you. and it was amazing. Thank you so much. How did you even end up winning an award? What are the things that you put into place that you could actually win the award that you won? <laughs> okay, I so think we would all like to. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't I don't remember doing any specific thing up till the time. In fact, when I was informed that I was nominated by you know court, I was like, who nominated me? Like I forgot or it's like I had no idea when nominations were ongoing. So it mm -hmm. means that someone who listens to my podcast or people who listen nominated me. Mm -hmm. So um I didn't yeah. know that an award of that nature was gonna happen. So I can't really say that these were the exact things i did to be nominated yeah. or mm. to win the award but i know that from the time when i was nominated up to yeah the time when i um, won the award i became intentional mm -hmm. <laughs> about winning mm -hmm. the award so what i did yeah. was i have i leveraged the audience that i had in and out of nigeria because our time zones are different and so mm. um, i would tell my my friends my listeners and in nigeria to make sure that they mm -hmm. make use of their wakeful moments so during the day yes. make sure you're you're getting the word out make sure you're sharing the mm. link with make sure you're getting pe people to vote right and then yeah. uh for my listeners abroad like in the u.s like with different time zones i'll tell them you know when nigeria goes to sleep <laughs> you guys are mm -hmm. still awake so um you carry that's on right from, yeah <laughs> carry yeah. on from there Make sure you're putting the yeah. link out. You're getting people to vote, people to listen, and all of that. So that was the strategy I used. So it was like round the clock. You mm. know, I, I think people were voting for me. Nigeria is sleeping. The US is voting. US is sleeping. Nigeria right. is voting. You know, just like yeah. that, like that, like that, like that. And then I, yeah. I even got frustrated at some point when they brought this second round of voting because I thought it was just the mm -hmm. first one. And so I put all mm -hmm. my energy. I got, in fact, I did an episode <laughs> dedicated to that first round of voting. Yeah. And so when they brought the yeah. second round, I was like, God, how do I, you know, put my link? How do I get people? I, I feel that people are tired already, you know, this whole voting thing. Yeah. Like, why, why can't they just yeah. give their word to someone? So yeah. I did not put in as much effort uh, the first time as I did the, uh, the second time. But then <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised that things turned out the the way they did and for me right <laughs> what's another thing i say okay another thing i can say i did you know from the time i was nominated was, uh, i started because i had a lot of traffic to uh, my social media pages so i mm -hmm. tried to put the, the house in order you know because mm -hmm. i'm going to have visitors you know so if you have yeah a, yeah if you have a jaga jaga social media presence <laughs> it's like people 
it will turn yeah. people away especially people yeah. who are like keen on aesthetics and all of that i'm not mm. big on aesthetics but for the sake of the podcast the podcast image and all right. of that i exactly i'm definitely you putting it. everything in order and then um nice i mean there's much more okay. to say but i, I don't think we yeah have no so that's much time that's right lovely so, no it's okay yeah. that was good yeah so yeah. this question goes out to all of you i'm gonna start with mr dre um mr dre where would you like to see your podcast in a year from now so all of you can answer this question where would you like to see your podcast in a year from now um i think as big based on the style of our and format of our podcast and how we've sort of done our programming and content i think in the next year i think i wanted to see i guess our podcast in more spaces in terms of like um i know how I know how the, the gentleman from AfriPods was talking about being syndicated and in different like you know radio stations. So I think for our podcast specific, specifically, it would be nice to have our our content you know in different spaces in different parts of the world actually, um, just to know how far our reach can go. So I think for us, it's just like getting more you know um, being in more spaces that um, that we are not in you know technically and having that sort of relationship with those organizations or networks or companies so for us it's just I think that's just it for us right now amazing amazing and then next we're gonna go to Victor where would you like to see your podcast from now Yes, yeah, so I'd say uh, contributing significantly to uh, the new African narrative. Uh, we see that as a huge responsibility. Like I said, our stories are African themed. We want to focus on, you know, showcasing Africa to the rest of the world, um, telling our stories and we want to be right at the middle of that. We want to be able to uh, have partnerships with our content, um, foreign organizations, local organizations working with us to push out our, our stories and, and uh, you know, start to see Africa in a new light. So of course, thousands and thousands of um, listens and downloads uh, because of that. Awesome, thank you so much, Victor, that's great. And then next, Ramat, where would you like to see your podcast a year from now? Yeah, um, we've got, let's see, three shows that we're consistently making. Um, so we're probably going to double that number in about a year, uh, bringing us to a total of six shows um, that we're consistently making and uh, looking for a lot more partnerships, uh, distribution, marketing, so that we can um, get our name out there some more. Amazing, amazing. And then the Young God podcast. The Young God, I love that name. It's so cool. <laughs> Where do you see your podcast a year from now? Oh, network is loading, loading. Okay, okay. I'll go up to Keziah. Keziah. I'm now thinking of how to say your name right. Where do you see your podcast Keziah. a year from now? Nice. Winning more awards, flourishing. <laughs> well, definitely winning more awards, topping the chats or the list but it's difficult to say right now because i'm on a break that i don't even see the end in sight yet but off the top of my head and you know being blind to the current realities i would say a year from now i want the young love podcast to be a household name so when podcast is mentioned in nigeria i want the first thing people think of to be oh there's this podcast the young love podcast you know and stuff like that and i also like started a youtube channel where people can see like the behind the scenes of the making of my episodes because i would always get feedback that because i want to see your face we want to see the face of your guests mm. we want to see stuff 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 so i started a youtube channel i haven't put up any video yet because i'm not podcasting at the moment but once i return from the break i'm definitely doing that putting the because it's going to make things really interesting where you're listening to drama and then you go to youtube and you see the actual drama happening so for me, a year from now, it's going to be entertainment, 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 getting the podcast to be a household name and chopping charts, you know. And I, I believe that beyond partnerships and distribution, nothing beats personal referrals when you can, word of mouth, mm. when, you know, someone yeah. listens to your podcast and he's so convinced that, oh my God, this podcast is so interesting. You would love it. Mm. For me, it makes me happy as a creative. So I think that would even bring the partnership and distribution when the traffic is being driven by 
you know, so many personal referrals. <clears throat> Love, love, love. That's amazing. I love that. Personal referrals is where it's at. That personal touch, exquisite, exquisite. Awesome. And then the young God is your network allowing you to grace us with your presence. Where would you like to see your podcast in a year? Wow. Wow, the network. <laughs> we will push through. That's not what we're doing here. That's not what we're doing here. We will push through this network. <laughs> Um, okay, so because the network is still doing what it's doing, I'm allowing Faye, I'm going to hand it over to Faye, our amazing founder and community lead for Niger Pod Hub. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much for who you mm -hmm. are and how much effort you put into the community. So go ahead and close us off and yeah, all to you. Okay, thank you, Balia. And thank you again to everyone who's taking the time to be here today. It's not easy. We can all see the struggle, especially with the internet and you know, time of day and all of that. Um, so to wrap it up, and again, thank you, Rachel, for like handling everything so far. But to wrap it up, I would just say um, each podcaster go around and tell us what would be your advice to a podcaster who's starting today on how to you know decide the way to build their content and build their audience as well. So I'll start with Kezaya. Oh, okay. Uh, for someone who uh, wants to start a podcast, I would say just mm -hmm. start. There's there's no such thing as being. Nothing prepares you for what you meet on you know on the path of podcasting. So you never really know until so you put one foot forward. So I would say just start. None of us started as experts, well, except maybe Tony Doe, who's already been in the industry. But <laughs> many of yeah. us started out just wanting to, you know, let our voices be heard. So just start. Now, when you start, uh, along the way, definition comes in. So when I mm. started initially, my target audience was just Nigerians in Nigeria. But as I began to, you know, release more and more episodes, I figured that wait. I have people listening from Australia who are sending in feedback, you know, different countries. And I'm like, okay, so the, the young people in all of these countries can actually relate to what I'm doing. And so it gave me more definition. So I expanded, like my target audience was no longer just Nigeria. So it would also influence the way I podcast it. So in previous episode, you will see me using some Niger slangs that I know people from other countries might not really understand. So because I became aware of other people enjoying what I'm doing, I became more accommodating with my language so that they could follow right. you know, what is being said. Mm -hmm. I decided to start speaking clear English, even though sometimes I like to speak pidgin and all of that. So I would just like put a mix on, you know, of everything. So if you, if you want to like start a podcast, number one, just start. Along the way, you'll definitely find definition. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't believe in being a, a master, uh, a jack of all trades, a master of none. It, for me, in content creation, it doesn't really make sense because when you're everywhere, people don't know what exactly it is to expect from you. I like a situation where when people are looking for romantic and entertaining content, they know exactly where to find it. You only love podcasts. Mm -hmm. If people need scientific um, facts and information, they can go to Dr. Ramot. If people just want to listen to banter and all of that, they go to Mr. Dre. You know, so I, I like specialization right so if you want to start a podcast as you find definition also find your niche you know settle in and when you settle in what it does for your podcast is it attracts the right audience to you and you really want that because that's how your podcast grows you know not not fake don't don't buy listeners don't buy followers don't do any of those stuff allow your podcast to grow organically don't put pressure on yourself for the numbers be more about um, a dedicated followership and a committed listener base and all of that so I think by the time you allow yourself to grow naturally, allow your growth to be organic, in one year, two years, you'll see that you're blossoming. And I think that's what every podcaster wants. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Kizai. Um, So I'll go to Mr. Dre now. What would your advice be to a new podcaster on content and how to grow their audience? Um, when it comes to like content and just growing your audience, I think the one thing is just consistency um again my podcast is just turning to this year but like you know being consistent at the pace that you are at so if you decide to do something once a month 
make sure you're doing it once a month kind of thing. If you are, you know, there has to, even if like within, within chaos, there's some sort of organization and it's for you to sort of figure that out when it comes to like, just, you know, trying to have yeah. grow your audience. So, you know, being consistent is one thing, whatever your plan is. And we're allowed to take breaks as, as human beings, as podcasters, because sometimes we do get like, you know, stonewalled with like creative blocks. So consistency is, is very, very key. Um, And the other thing is just like, figuring out just community community helps with content in my own opinion because that we are able to sort of know um what people want to listen to what people want to hear and you can either then have that direct connection with the community in terms of delivering this your content and in in sort of like it's a, it's a loop of of information because while you're feeding from them you're also feeding them um with information so for me again it's just consistency um because like <clears throat> um that that helps in sort of people knowing oh this comes out every week this comes out once a month um um and just building around that and then the other thing like i said it's just community having a community um because for like us now as, as a back about podcast as my eyes myself um being the fact that i was able to find a community like Nigeria pod hub that allowed me to sort of you know know what just be a get a get an idea of what like Nigerians are into in terms of the podcasting space and, and, and listenership and audience and be able to tap from that and sort of bring that back to my own podcast mm-hmm. and be able to sort of grow that and, 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 and take that into account while I'm creating content and who I'm creating content for. So again, you know, um, community is very big for me now. Um, being the fact that I've been able to sort of grow my podcast through community um, and, 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 and meet new people through community. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you so much, Dre. Um, let's have the next response from Victor. Okay, uh, I mean, I feel like uh, the podcast industry in Africa and Nigeria is on the upside, so it's a good time to jump in. But uh, a few things, um, you have to be clear on the goal. What are you trying to achieve with your podcast? Um, create a longer niche. Better if you, if you create your content or, around a specific niche so people can know you for something. And then, yeah, just like the other speaker said, you have to be consistent with it. And, um, and then just focus on growth, focus on your community, uh, build a community, um, keep your target audience in mind all the time. Um, sometimes people just want to, you know, do whatever they want to do. But yeah, I think target audience uh, should be, should always come first in your, in your creation process. So, yeah. But the, the industry is growing, so it's a good time to jump in. Okay, thank you, Victor. Um, let's have an answer from Tony Doe. Tony, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. Did you hear the question um, or you want me to repeat? Please repeat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Although I have an so, idea based on the answers I've heard. Oh, okay. So the basic thing is for someone who wants to start a podcast today, what would you advise they do when it comes to content and ways to grow their audience? Well, from everything I've listened to, um, if I really said anything else, I'll just be echoing what they've already said. I was really blown away by, you know, the submissions of others. But I'll say this. Um, Some things have changed between when I wanted to start podcasting and how podcasting is now. And so um, you have to be prepared to evolve with podcasting as well. So if you're stuck in a way of thinking and saying, okay, maybe this is how I want to do my podcast, Um, you know, things could leave you behind. In the past, what your podcast was about seems to be the most important question. But right now I found out that why you're starting a podcast should actually be the most important question because your why will determine whether you're in it for the long haul or you're just dabbling and will probably fade away real soon so if you're certain about your why no matter what happens to you while you're podcasting you will keep going there will be a certain level of consistency you will have a consistent reminder of um, the value you're adding to somebody's life with your content and then you keep going Mm -hmm. so it's important to think about your why even before you think about your what okay thank you and finally would have ramat Great, thank you. Um, And thank you again for all the effort in organizing this. Um, In terms of content creation, I would say find content that allows you to be your authentic self uh, first, uh, something that you're passionate about 
And, um, you know, once you find that for yourself, you will find your audience because you're not, you know, you're not unique. There are going to be people who are passionate about the same thing. So find content that you're passionate about that allows you to be your authentic self. Um, and then um, and then you also find a style that works for you um, that also allows you to be your authentic self. And then try to be consistent with that content and style for about three months. Right. So go for like one quarter of the year where you're doing it before you change up anything. Um, and then like like uh, Dre said, be consistent um, with, within content and style. Um, and then in terms of getting your, your audience, every platform, use every platform, use WhatsApp, you know, family, friends, uh, YouTube, everything out there to, to help build. Hit the streets. Out there. Exactly, hit the streets <laughs> um, and get your content out there. Yeah. Okay. So on behalf of Naja Podhub and the Africa Podfest family, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for sharing your valuable time, your experience, your expertise, and your journey with the rest of the community. And luckily for us, this video, this session is going to be online for a very, 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 very long time. So anybody who needs to learn anything from it will have the opportunity of coming here and seeing it. Again, thank you so much for being part of the community. And if there's any way in which Naja Podhub can support you or your podcast, please feel free to reach out. All right. So this is the end of our session, um, the roundtable session. Uh, Belia, you can jump back uh, right in here. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You guys were amazing. Round of applause, round of applause. Despite the network errors, all of that stuff, you guys were so, so cool. The gems, the vibes, everything was really, really lovely. Thank you so much for your time. And you guys can go forth and flourish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So today was amazing. Wow, wow, wow. Today was so amazing. I'm so excited that we get to do things. And remember, we had a surprise for you. Joyce is going to still perform for us. So Joyce, please come on board. Thank you so much for doing the most with us today. If you are here, come, come, come. We're ready for you. Come and serenade us with your beautiful vibes. Joyce, Joyce, Joyce. Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's nice to see you. Um, let's do this. Uh, so I'll just perform a medley of three songs, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead. <coughs> this is called It's Okay to Cry. <coughs> most, most nights I want to be alone. I cry my little self to sleep Most nights I want to be alone I cry my little self to sleep But it's okay to cry It's okay to feel lost inside It's okay to cry It's okay to feel Sad inside, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel numb inside, it's okay to cry. Oh, hello, this fine child. Beautiful, you are my love, baby. From the first day to the last day, I'll be loving you all the time. It's all of a fight. You give me. I don't ever want to see you down. Let me play big sister. Keep away from the la la. Keep away from the la la. Close your eyes from the blah blah. Close your eyes from the blah blah. They don't matter. And don't act like grandma from the floor. Honey, you best behave. Don't act like grandma from the floor. Sister, sister, the world is your oyster. Sister, sister, the world is your oyster. Please be here for what life has to offer. Sister, sister, the world is your oyster. Because you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Will you make me feel things only with your smile? You never know, dear.
just so much I love you. Why so far away? I want to show you just so much I love you. Emotions flow whenever I'm far, but just you mind. Emotions flow whenever I'm far, but just you mind. Sunshine's all day, raindrops all night, but just you mind. Sunshine's all day, raindrops all night, but just you mind. Raindrops, I see them falling from the sky. And teardrops, and you're always falling from my eyes. Whenever I see you smile, whenever I see you fading, raindrops, you're always falling from the sky. Teardrops, you're always falling from my eyes. Whenever I see you smile, whenever I see you smile, smile. Whenever I see you smile, whenever I see you smile. Thank you. Um, that's all I have for now. That was a lovely um, by me and Yinka Bernie. Uh, it's okay to cry, sister, sister, and yes, the last one was uh, Oraster. Yeah. So thank you. Joyce! Oh, that was so beautiful. Oh, close your ears to the blah blah. That was my favorite line. Like literally. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Joyce with the serenading. It was beautiful. Today has been amazing. I don't know about you, but I have learned so much. I've enjoyed just discussing all of the vibes about African podcasting and everything in between. Thank you all so much for everything that you guys have been doing. Thank you so much for sticking with us through the network issues, through the connection issues. You guys are the best, the best community ever. So Thank you once again, Nigeria. You guys know how to do the most. I am really excited. I'm so thankful to be a part of this community. And shout out to Niger Pod Hub once again for bringing the energy and bringing the fire and just connecting so many African podcasters. I am going to invite Mel and Joe back on our beautiful humans from Africa Podfest. Hi, ladies. Hi, hey, hey that was <laughs> so amazing. Like I have been taking wow. notes. I've been so inspired. Ooh. Even got like a little tear there with a little the, tear. With, yeah, with the music. It's it's been so yes. good. Um and yeah. so insightful. For me, uh, a big yeah. takeaway from the round table is that I think someone in the, the whole thing was just amazing, the whole discussion. But there was one statement yeah. that just sat with me, which was about African podcasting is unique because of the yeah, spectrum yeah. of voices across Af yeah. Africa, across the continent, and the diaspora. And I was like, "Yeah, yes, like African people are, are everywhere, very fresh to the world. Yeah, yeah. And Definitely. I'm going home with that one. Ah. <laughs> uh. I am so in awe of everybody's um, gifts and talents. Uh, let me just shout out. First of all, um, you know, just Delia and Adele. Adele, we, uh, we miss you and your quick recovery. And uh, we, we feel your presence, you know, right through this. Yes. Um, Adele and Adele have been our captains through the whole discovery tour, just letting us understand what's happening, connecting us um, across Africa. So thank you for that. But today, I think, I, I, and what I can say is we are diamonds. Like that, that we statement really captures. We are shining like my engagement. Look at us. Look at us. Ah, Belia. <laughs> Never <laughs> miss an opportunity to show us. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. We are that diamond. We are 
Uh, Beria, yeah. you're carrying us everywhere, showing us off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. Um, so Belia is all sunshine, says Dio. Uh, we totally agree. Oh, Thank you so much for bringing yeah, totally. that spark, that sunshine, that energy. Yeah. It comes from a place. Um, you, and, uh, please tell people your podcast one more time so they can get more. more yes, more of yes, yes. Of course. So my podcast is called Conversations That Bloom. It's everywhere where you listen to podcasts, you will find it. And literally my energy carries through the entire season that I've launched this this last year. So yeah, check it out everywhere. You will love the vibes. Thank you so much, you guys. Ah, The love is beautiful. And I really just enjoy everything that I do with you guys. This community that we're building is amazing, explosive, innovative, creative, just passionate about what they do. And it's just an honor to be a part of this journey. So thank you so much. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please come again. <laughs> please join us. Um, I know people will be asking us whether you're coming to Africa Podcast Day. So oh. you know, will the people see you there? <laughs> yes, guys, pray for my visa. Pray for my flight tickets. Pray, guys, get on your knees and pray. <laughs> I really, really want to be awesome. there. I'm going to do my best. Yes. <laughs> Fingers, toes, everything crossed. Uh, prayer everything. Wishes. Uh, and thank you for uh, being such an amazing, amazing host uh, for this session. Yeah. And we ask you to share all our love with everybody in Zambia who hosted, who yeah. joined together, people who yeah. first introduced Africa to the Africa Podfest Cupcake. Um, yeah. And somewhere near you. So among other things, um, we just want to appreciate you and we'll see you very, very soon. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Have a lovely evening. I am off. I just love you guys so much. And of course, I will see you and see you guys everywhere on socials. Thank you so much for the honor. Bye. 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 Oh my goodness, Melissa, mm. this is so incredible. I'm seeing, first of all, let me shout out the comment section. Mm -hmm. There's been some folks who've been with us throughout sharing their comments. Uh, Rafiat, uh, Dio, Rachel, um, people who called in, our amazing, amazing teammate, Marianne, um, the folks from AfriPods. If I miss your name, please don't leave me out. Our friends in Angola, Podcast Angola, um, we had so many people join in. Women's Prayer Group from the U.S., Adam Mathai, Molly J., Angela Mashua, um, Sweet and Sour with Hikmat. Um, so many of you joined in. Toby um, and OK, you know, so many of you joined in. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving that love, that energy to this session. Everybody who shared, tweeted, retweeted, um, commented uh, online at um, Africa Podfest, at Niger Pod Hub, at AfriPods, and everybody who's kept the conversation going. What you don't know is that uh, the Niger Pod Hub team have been working on this for months. Like, if you see everything come together, if you see people sounding, things are clicking, just know that they've been working on this super, super, and you can see the results. Um, it's been offline, it's been online. Thank you so much, Faye. Everybody at Niger Pod Hub, we can't name you individually, but we really, really appreciate you. And we can't wait yeah. to one day meet up face to face. Yes, oh, we really cannot wait to meet up one day face to face. And we hope we are working for this day, you know, this, when yes, this day comes. Yes. <laughs> In the meantime, we continue to gather virtually as much as we can. And mm -hmm. our next very exciting gathering, which is... The only, I think it's the only global, the only gathering that is global that focuses mm -hmm. on African podcasting. And that yes. is the Africa Podcast Festival, which is taking place on Africa Podcast Day, which mm -hmm. is every year on February 12th. So this year on Saturday, February 12th, join us at the annual festival to celebrate Africa Podcast Day where you will be together with Africa's podcasting pioneers, such as the wonderful, amazing spirits and minds who you've listened to today. Uh, join podcast listeners, podcast supporters of different types from Africa and around the world who will come together on February 12th to celebrate African storytelling. We'll learn together, 
and we will build community around this year's theme, which is podcasting, podcasting is freedom. Is freedom. Freedom. <laughs> exactly. We love podcasting, which is why we do this work. And we'd love to hear from you on Africa Podcast Day. What does podcast, what does freedom mean to you? And how are podcasts creating is for your expression, connection, and for fresh voices in Africa, your voices. And what do you imagine for the future of African podcasting? These are some of the questions we're going to be exploring, talking to each other through a full day of sessions virtually. We are, as we look forward to the day when we will be able to all gather physically. Yes, and we've been talking about the Discovery Tour and how it's been the road to Africa Podcast Day. There will be a selection of different podcasters from around the world, specifically Africans podcasting about Africa um, and global podcasts that are focused on Africa will be represented. We will be able to share a lot of new uh, launches with you, new content. There is a definite sense of our podcast learning to continue. We have amazing partners who have offered some fun goodies. We know that it's virtual um, and it has been from the tour of Kenya, Zambia, South Africa, and now Nigeria. But these countries only represent a fraction of the countries that are putting African podcasting on the global podcasting map. Why does Africa Podcast Day exist? Well, we created this day to celebrate and appreciate the best of the continent's podcasting industry, which, as, as was mentioned, actually, is on the up and up. African podcasting is the next big thing for the world to watch and see. Africa Podcast Day and the festival are, is directed by myself and Joe, who are the co-directors of Africa Podcast, and we created this Africa Podcast which is an annual celebration, as well as the festival as a space for the region's podcasting pioneers, which you are among the Africa's podcasting pioneers. So we created this as a space for you to gather, share knowledge, and connect with African and international partners to make this industry happen for us. From you as the listener, Melissa, myself, everybody who listens to um, Great African Podcasts, to you, the podcasters who create these painstaking collections of our lived experience, our stories, our experiences, our businesses, our infrastructure, and everything we care about in Africa, to the greater audio community, our friends from the radio world, our friends who've been gathering uh, around community journalism, around radio, um, creating ways of sharing content on new platforms like WhatsApp and other media, to everybody who has been on all uh, the shared platforms, whether it's Clubhouse, whether it's um, Twitter spaces, just continuing to enhance the impact of audio across Africa. We see you the way you see us, and we recognize the growth of podcasting on the continent because of you and because of everything that you've brought. And Africa is a historically audio continent, and we know that because you already listen to lots of great audio, that podcasting will continue to grow. So without further ado, what can you do, Melissa? What can you do now that you've heard about Africa Podcast Day? Well, you can get your free ticket. Get them while they're hot. Get your free ticket to participate at Africa Podcast Day 2022 at the celebrations of Africa Podcast Day. And to do that, check out our social media at Africa Podfest across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And there you will find a link to hop in the virtual event space that we are going to be using, that we're going to be spending time together at is called hopin, hopin.com slash events mm -hmm. slash Africa Podcast Day 2022. So go to our social media at Africa Podfest to get in with the action. If you are not already, head on 
again to our social media or to our, and to our website, africapodcastfestival.com and sign up to our monthly newsletter because you'll be getting the updates live as soon as they get out of the kitchen. You'll be getting updates about Africa Podcast Day 2022. Absolutely. And what have we to say apart from thank you? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have thank to. You um, yes, thank you all. And we have to say good day, good afternoon, good night to everybody who's joined us who and everybody who's watching this later. Um, and thank you so much for your time and for joining us on this exciting journey. That's right. So from us in Nairobi. Goodbye mm -hmm. and see you soon. Bye-bye.